Um, also, ask. Uh, I don't know what Sec said, but uh, well, actually, Sec can answer that because he's the one who PM'd you. What's up? Regeneral. <laughs> it, no, I don't want to distract your discussion. I just wasn't sure if you asked me here for a reason. Um, oh yeah, because we were talking about you. Oh well, um, <laughs> I guess I'm a topic of conversation. Um, was there like something in particular? Yeah, we were talking about your response to Jack's uh, particularist objection. Um, okay, well, are we talking about um, the reply that I made in that um, debate video to uh, particularism over universalism? Like, why, why there would be a preference one way or the other? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen that video, but... Yeah, because I don't I don't hold to that position anymore. I think I think he's right about that. Oh, okay. But Wait, so how? So from what I understand, I mean, Jack's here, so I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it sounds like he's saying that um, his response to the NTV is just that there are some irreducible facts that don't appeal to other properties that you know cows have that humans don't have. That it, that is that we can eat them and we can't eat humans. I, I'm not clear in what sense that's a reply to name the trait. Like, is the trait, um, like, what is the trait supposed to be? The trait is that it's permissible to eat them. The trait is that it's permissible to eat them. So, what, like, you mean that you, like, you view it as permissible? Sorry, say that again? Because, like, the whole thing we're asking is, like, we understand that it's permissible to eat one, and we understand that it's not permissible to eat the other. Um, so the question is basically, as we start uh, modifying the properties of the human to become more and more like the animal, at what point do they fall into that category where it's not okay? Or, sorry, where it is okay to eat them? Um, so, well, I mean, I don't want, again, I don't want to like speak for Jack, but it sounded like he was just saying that the property itself is just the property of being able like being able to kill it and eat it and human doesn't have that property and there's all that's all there is to it there's no further fact of the matter um i'm not clear how exactly that answers the question so if the question is at what point uh in the trait equalization process is value lost uh, how is that an answer to that question I, I don't think it is. I think he's just saying that that's not under particulars and that's not how it works. But then again, I don't know why I'm speaking for Jack. Jack's here, so I don't uh, know why I'm answering it. For yeah, I, I actually, I actually, I don't understand why that why it would be the case that there's some problem on the view for particularism. But the one thing I want to be really clear about is that I did make an error in the first conversation I had with him. I think the name the trait portion of that conversation, which was the first part, was fine. But um, in unless someone wants to point out some kind of problem there, but in the second portion, um, when we started talking about particularism, like, I honestly, to this day, I'm not totally sure exactly what, <laughs> what wavelength I was on there, but whatever reply I was giving, I was saying something like, I'm not a particularist because particularism could justify anything, and he was just replying by saying universalism could justify anything, which is true, right? It's just a point that's just true of both positions, so it's not like a reason to choose one over the other. Um, I think that I was I was comparing like my specific position to particularism generally, or I was thinking of something like that. But yeah, the the one point I want to be really clear about is I don't hold to that position anymore. So um, yeah, I think that the fact that um, a particularist could have like um, you know moral uh, preferences or values that could justify any action, like a uh, universalist, the same thing applies to them. So that's not a reason to select one over the other. Uh, but as for, like, the question of um, how talking about, like, particularism or, or any of those things you said about particularism are an answer to uh, name the trade, I'm still not clear about that. I don't, I don't think they exactly are. Uh, well, maybe Jack has more to say on since it is his... Oh, I'm just not seeing what the objection is. Um, well, I'm not seeing what the answer to the question is. So the question is so just... So what question? Yeah, so the question would be, um, 
on your view, presumably, it's uh, it's not okay to murder a human and make them into a hamburger. Um, like if we were to, for example, replace the animals in the factory farms right now with humans, wouldn't be okay to kill them. It is okay right now with it being animals. So the question is just if we start switching the properties of the human uh, more and more towards the animal until eventually we end up with the same thing, at what point in that process um, do you look at the being in question and say, okay, it's fine to uh, you know murder and eat that being? I don't, I'm just not seeing what the argument is. Is there some kind of argument against the view? No, it's not an argument. It's a question. Is there, I don't, yeah, I don't see what, I, what I meant to be providing an argument for right now. Well, I thought, I thought there was supposed to be some kind of argument that if you think that what makes it the case that it's okay to eat cows, but not okay to eat humans, is that there's an, irreducible it's okay to eat property in the cow and there's an irreducible it's not okay to eat property in the human right that there's supposedly that's supposed to enmesh you in some kind of contradiction right i'm not clear why you'd think that like do you think that that's something that i've said at some point no, i'm just wondering if there's an argument against the view um, so there's not an argument that there's some kind of logical problem with just saying this thing has value to me, that thing doesn't have value to me. Um, if okay, that's, so yeah. then what more is there to discuss? Well, I think that basically by kind of engaging in a dialogue process around um, your moral system, you can expose... Um, I, I don't you, have a system. Well, look, by system, I just mean your, uh, your set of values. Um, I think that you can expose uh, conclusions in there that um, a lot of people would not be comfortable with. And the idea is yeah, like... But why if we're, would I care about that? Well, I was about to say, the idea is like, if we're all um, some kind of like non-realist here, um, like I call myself a subjectivist, right? Um, I think that we would just view moral discussion, um, I mean, like we'd view it as being largely about persuading other people of our values, or maybe showing that one of their actions is in discord with uh, what their yeah, values so are, right? Yeah, so where, where is so, the discord? Well, no, the, the argument, um, so, uh, here, one second, you're, you're chopping in on me, and it's making me lose my train of thought. So the idea is just to engage in this kind of dialogue process and see if we can get to the point that we're showing some kind of uncomfortable conclusion on the view for most people um, or sometimes there actually is a contradiction yeah, I'm not I'm not interested in whether other people find my views uncomfortable or not right I just want to understand whether that there's some kind of problem with my holding that view. by problem do you mean like there's some kind of like logical issue yeah yeah, so no, the claim has never been that there's some so kind of logical issue. So you don't have a defeater for that position, right? No, I mean, I think, that, I think that any moral position you can just, like, I mean, you could have whatever values you want to have, but you're, um, you're trying to frame it as if at some point, um, as if I think that there is a defeater and now I'm in some way uh, conceded. No, I'm so just trying to get what, clear that you don't have a defeater for this. Right, so... Well, let, let me be totally clear about what I'm trying to do. So when I have these conversations, the goal is just to get to the conclusions of what the position says and show that if it's a non-vegan position, it's got conclusions that most people are not going to be happy with. So that's the purpose of asking questions about the position, yeah, like the first question I, I that I asked. It doesn't matter to me whether other people are not happy with it. I'm just wondering if you had a defeater for the position. Well, if by a defeater you mean some way to show that, like, uh, a given moral position is, like, fundamentally wrong, like, people can have whatever values they want, right? So that's not necessarily what I'm trying to do. Um, now, I think that you're just saying that you're not interested in the task that I'm setting out to do, and that's fine. You don't have to be interested, but, um, you know, I am. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I'm curious what your reply actually would be to the question, though. Um, I don't have an answer for that. Right. So if I ask you if you have any clue at all 
uh, where in the trade equalization process values lost? Your answer is that you don't know. I mean, I don't see why I would know. Right. But I don't so, see why but, it's an interesting question if it's not a defeater for my fear. Well, I've already given you an account of what interests me in the situation, right? So it doesn't have yeah. to be that there's some kind of logical problem. So for you to keep replying by saying, oh, it's not interesting to me, <laughs> well, there's a particular thing that I'm trying to get at, right? So yeah, but, but what why, I so why wait well just I just I want I just want oh well if you just don't want to engage in the discussion that's fine but I have I'm just <laughs> I was interested in hearing I was interested in seeing if there was an argument that there was some kind of untenability in appealing to an irreducible property no why why <laughs> that's not that's not at any point what i've been uh trying to say so i don't i don't know why you're trying to like sort of thrust that on me um what i think is i'm not saying i think that's i think what that you're trying to... i okay well then forgive my bad characterization if that's not what you're trying to do um but uh if there's anything that's untenable um with someone like you who's you know going to try to be as consistent as possible and who's got a concern for philosophy and logic it's doubtful that there's going to be a contradiction um what's more likely is just that the view has some kind of unpalatable conclusion and if you feel like actually engaging in the dialogue process we can see if we can get I, to that i conclusion. don't know what you mean by unpalatable conclusion uh, a conclusion that would be in dissonance with the values of a large yeah. amount of what people. is now what recording is what is the dissonance relation if it's not an inconsistency relation? Uh, it could be an inconsistency between your values and their values, but it doesn't have to be an inconsistency within your values, right? So the idea is if someone has some kind of like dissonance when presented with one of your values, they hold some kind of contrary value or they don't hold that value. Um, so let me, let me just ask. Um, you say that you have absolutely no clue where in the trade equalization process value is lost? I don't know what the trade equalization process is. That's, so that's just we uh, take uh, the human, we take the animal, and all of the things true of them, and we start equalizing the properties of the human to the properties of the animal uh, until eventually they just have the same properties. And the question is just if you have any idea at all where in that process value drops off not really now that has some kind of crazy implications right so if you say you have absolutely no idea then we can take one step into that process we get a human with a single cow hair and apparently you're uncertain of the moral status of that being that seems wacky to me so presumably you have well, some idea is it false pardon did you did you ask me if it's false when you say crazy, I'm not sure what you mean. You know, false. By crazy, I mean what I'm talking about before. It's going to be in dissonance with my values and likely the values of a large amount of people. But so, the point is, what, right? What, well, one, one sec. Is... Before, before, before you say what the point is, I, I think that there's a, you're deploying a bit of a... Now recording. <laughs> you're deploying a bit of a, like... I mean, I can't tell if it's intentional or not, but it's as if when I start pushing in the direction of showing something that's going to be uncomfortable to a lot of people about your view, um, you start replying by asking if the view is false. And I'm already telling you that what I'm doing is not necessarily trying to expose the view as being false or contradictory. I don't, I don't understand. So what I'm saying is that value properties are moral perception. Sure. Right? Values are varial, values are moral perception. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Now, if I say that I don't know what I'm going to perceive is valuable or disvaluable in some hypothetical circumstance, right? What follows from the fact, right, that some people would have different expectations about how they would be in that situation? I just don't get it. Oh, well, I mean, if uh, your conclusion about that situation is significantly different than theirs, they're going to disagree with you. I mean, that's the idea. No, it's not, it's not, it's not any more complicated they already, than that. No, but wait a minute. They already disagree. They may not right? disagree with you. They may not realize no, no. they disagree with Let's, you until the conclusions of the position are teased out. That's the whole I, idea. I don't, know what, I don't know what you mean by that, right? So if I say I don't like chocolate, right, but I like vanilla, and somebody else says, oh, 
I like chocolate. Um, but I don't like vanilla. And then you say, well, what if uh, you encountered a an ice cream sundae that had like a little dollop of um, vanilla in it, right? And I said, I don't know whether I would like that or not, right? How is that supposed to change somebody's mind if they have discordant values from mine? I just don't understand what how this is supposed to work. Well, the idea is just that if you show that um, someone's view uh, leads somewhere uh, that a given person won't agree with, that person won't agree with it. I mean, that's kind of like all there is to it. So it's just, if you, um, it's it's just the idea is exploring what your view ultimately says and but, seeing but if the you, point and is see, wait, one, well, come on, Jack, let me, let me know. get, let me get some words across. So the idea is just to explore what your view says and see if it's ultimately a view that people would agree with. It's not, it's not but really they, anything they, beyond that. They can't, they can't know, right, on a sensibility theoretic view. Right, how they would react. Right, they can just make how they would react to what? To being in those situations, right? Um, yeah, but I think if your guess about, well, I mean, for, I don't know why exactly that's true, but if that's, oh yeah, okay, because I guess when you're visualizing the situation in your head, that's different than actually perceiving it, and you might have a different reaction, sure. But if your determination about what you do in the hypothetical is like sufficiently wacky. Um, like, for example, the position that you just put out where you have no idea where values lost in the trade equalization process, which would imply that you're completely morally uncertain about a, cu a human with a single cow hair on their body. That's just going to seem like a wacky position to most people. Right. And that's the extent of it. To ask some follow up question like, is it false? is just missing the point of, of uh, the whole dialogue process. But I just I, I guess I just don't get it right. If somebody said, um, if they were confronted with um, a person who was missing an arm and um, normally they don't think it's right to like kill people, but they don't know how they would react, right? If they encountered somebody who was missing an arm, maybe they would think it was okay to kill them, right? And let's say I think that in that situation, I wouldn't think it was okay. Why is that interesting? Um, that uh, they, okay, so they just have different. They just have different moral values from me. Right. right? So, so I, what's? Yeah, I, I didn't. What's I didn't. Interesting. I didn't track every detail of the analogy there, but the again, like the thing that the whole sort of dialogue process and argument is um, ultimately doing, is it's just teasing out what a view that's anti-vegan ultimately ends up saying right and just showing um and just just displaying that and then the idea is that uh most people will not be comfortable with what these views say right so that's yeah, that's the person, extent of it this wait, person wait, wait so i'm just i'm just trying to understand let's just let's just grant that for a second why why would it need to do something beyond that right if the goal is just I'm to just trying to understand right, well, well just well, well one sec i just i don't want i just don't i just don't want us to keep repeating the same thing so i just want to make sure that you understand what um what the goal is right so if we all if we all just have our own separate values right and we're trying to persuade other people um and you know show them if we if we want to show that a given position isn't reasonable then it's good to develop some kind of tool or dialogue process that you can run when you're talking to people who hold I a given... I don't know what you mean by unreasonable. Uh, out of line with what they value, right? But so, that's, so, well, well, that's well, well wait, but you're not, you're, not, you're not letting me um, get my thoughts across. So just let me, uh, let me communicate here for a second. Because when you talk, like I have ADD, when you start talking, I lose focus on what I'm trying to say. So we need to take turns. Um, Okay, so, yeah, so the, why would it be wrong for the whole goal of the dialogue process to be simply to show the conclusions of a given view and um, give, pe a, a, with the idea in mind that when people see that conclusion, they will be unhappy and not align with the view? What would be wrong with just designing a tool for that purpose? But the conclusions are not hidden. They're perspicuous. 
Pardon me? The conclusions are not hidden, they're perspicuous. What's that supposed to mean? Meaning if I say I don't know how I would react in those situations, right? There's there's no mystery there that has to be teased out. Right? Oh, so oh, well, uh, well, I don't I don't know if I'd say there's a mystery, but if you tell me that you're uncertain about uh, whether you would value a human with a single cow hair again like i think you've just lost most people and that's the whole purpose of the dialogue uh, uh, flow is just to show I, that I, people who I hold just, the carnist position it. have views that most people would not align with well, maybe, maybe somebody else here understands well saying. well i i'm not i'm not sure i'm not sure what you're struggling with like let's try to clear it up because i really don't think it's that confusing don't you think that it could be useful to have a tool that teases out the conclusions of views such that people can see that they don't agree with those views what what, what can you just at uh, jack can you just give an answer to that question i don't want to be rude but i've asked a lot I don't of times see, i don't see how it's useful because i don't see how there's anything that's hidden right um, wait, why would be something being hidden being being relevant to whether it's useful? You it, said teased out. Well, teased out doesn't... Right? Oh, wait, but it, okay, well, we have to be clear what we mean by hidden. Just uh, not, not, uh, like, not currently visible to people? Like, if that's the case, then you can say it's hidden. Yeah, I don't see that there's anything, right, that's mysterious about the position where anything has to be teased out. I'm just not... Oh, well, look, did before I asked you if you had any idea where in the trait uh, equalization process values lost, did I know the answer to that question? No, but it doesn't no, matter. No, so something was teased right? out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, all, wait, but, but uh, Jack, it's, it's as if, it's as if you... every time I ask you a question and where you know that the uh, answering will uh, grant me my case, you ask a question in response. So why don't you just an wait, wait? Why don't you just answer that? So you asked what there is to tease out, and I just told you when I asked you about where in the trade equalization value is lost, uh, and you gave an answer. Do you think that I gained information by doing that? And if so, in some trivial sense, maybe. Why, wait, wait, why wait, 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 wait! No, 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 no! In some trivial sense, what's that supposed to mean? I gained information. I did not know what your position was before. Did, I did, did know you? after. Therefore, I teased something out. Did you find something out that uh, affected whether you would accept my position or not? Uh, I all well for me personally no because I already reject the position because of your so, view. Wait, stop, stop, stop! Come on, I already reject the view because of your position on veganism, right? But to an observer who's currently not convinced of uh, veganism, who's a carnist, right, and who who thinks you know maybe it's justifiable to eat meat then sees that conclusion, they're going to go, well, that's a position that I can't take to defend that view. One down. Wait, which part of my position do they... I think most people would not take a position of being uncertain about the moral status of a human with a single cow hair. Well, wait a minute. I just said that I wouldn't know how I would react in a case like that. Right. It, it... That's not taking a position. Um, well, when what I'm referring to your is, position, okay, sorry, go ahead. What my position is, right, is that it's okay by my light, right, to eat. Now, you, you got cut off there. Did you say more? Or sorry. Did, it's okay. I said, it, what my position is, is that it's not okay to eat cows, and it's okay to eat human beings, right, by my mm -hmm. light. Yeah. Now, if somebody asks me, well, why are you willing to do that, right? It's not in virtue of anything further, right? It's just an irreducible property, right? Now, <laughs> but that's not the element I'm criticizing, but continue. Well, that's what I'm trying to understand, right? So if a person said, oh, well, that person doesn't know how he would react if, you, if he encountered a, a person who had one cow hair, right? How does that show that there's some kind of problem with them holding the same view as I do? I don't get it. Um, well, d okay, so the cow hair thing, that seems to me, like in most people's eyes, it would be crazy. So they wouldn't be comfortable holding a view where they say that they have no idea where in the trade equalization process. No, 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 no. You're not understanding what the... 
Well, when I'm referring to the view, I'm referring to uh, when you say that you're completely uncertain where in the trade equalization no, process no. value is lost. The wait, view wait, wait, is. No, no, wait, Jack. When you say you're you're uh, you're unintentionally equivocating on view, right? What I'm referring to as the view is your position that you're uncertain where in the trade equalization process that's value is lost. That's a distinct. That's a distinct issue, right? From my view about whether it's okay to eat cows, right? Um, but this, when I say the view and I'm trying to show the problem, uh, this is what I'm talking about. That I epistemologically as an individual have some uncertainty, but some... Yeah, so the, your view on the question of where in the trade equalization process value is lost. If your view on that question is, I have absolutely no idea, that has an implication that people won't accept. I don't understand. Well, what, 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 what is it that would make it the case, right, that uh, I oughtn't to be uncertain about that? Is there some kind of like fact I can look for in the world? You no, I mean, what are you, you really like? It's funny. Do you think that I'm so noob level that you're going to bait me into trying to argue for moral realism? I'm making a clear no, point. And it's like you're just, just not. You're not really responding to it. All right, look, look. Well, I can keep walking look, you through let me it. Just, let me just, let, yeah, well, you're not doing a good job. So let, well, let why me don't, see. Well, why don't is we bring anybody, in another, you know, well, sure. Is there we're... Anybody, <laughs> anybody else here who understands the I, I, I would, of this procedure? I, I would be very surprised, just... I would be very surprised if Jen didn't understand. So I'm curious what Jen has to say. Um, well, I'm a little bit confused as to, it seems like Jack is saying, um, what what he would think if confronted with that example is just irrelevant to sort of the force of the argument. But it sounds like you're saying that the person who hears him say that would say, "Oh, well, obviously it's so obvious. It shouldn't it shouldn't be a question of I have no idea. So that means their position is wrong, or I, it's not something I would take personally." Is that about right? Um, generally, so the idea is. If we ask the question, um, if we start equalizing all the properties of an animal to a human, at what point is value lost? Uh, if someone's reply to that is, uh, I have no idea, right? That's what I'm talking about as the position, right? The, so if we make it a proposition, the proposition would be, I have no idea, uh, it, yeah, we could say, I have no idea where in the trade equalization process value is lost. That's a position that people would not agree with. But I think, I think Jack is just saying it's not really interesting on a moral anti-realist view that a bunch of other people might find, but I find it. Well, what, let, me, let me talk to Jen for a second, because also, um, it does, interesting to him, I mean, that's kind of like, that's like beside the point. So the idea what is, it? is the, the idea is just to show that the, uh, what Karnas positions end up saying is unpalatable to most people. Now, I, I if, if I can, if I can means. ask, if I can ask a simple question about your Karnas position, and that's the answer you generate, uh, that is going to. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. Like that's going to look wacky to most people. Most people aren't I, going I, to accept that. So just, just I, talking to Jen for a second, uh, does that answer your question, or is there something? Oh wait, so where exactly is it um, problematic? Like, let's like, let's say we're using another example. This is somewhat analogous to when people use like Sorites examples right where they'll be like uh well you know where do we cut off what bald and not bald is and someone can't give a concrete answer and they're like well that's ridiculous right but i don't know if it's like how is that supposed to like because say you're talking to jack how is that supposed to convince jack for instance that oh his, his oh, position is problematic the, wait there's a, a problem with the question right there so the goal isn't necessarily to uh convince the person who you're speaking to but then how is it an argument though it's not an argument for veganism then right it, well for, firstly it's not, it's not really an argument it's more of like a dialogue process there's um oh, okay. yeah and um the idea is that people watching will um find that pretty wacky like just as wait a, didn't once, i say once, that just, like a few just, weeks ago and you got just, mad at me who who is that do i do we know each my other? name is tiny tofi oh i didn't even recognize your um voice um, I don't know. I don't know what exactly you said or what I said to it, but um, I just want to one second. So with um, with Jen, so surely, um, first of all, you would agree, 
I assume that it's wacky to say that you are uncertain about the moral status of a human with a single cow hair. And by wacky, I mean, like, presumably that's not a view that you hold. Um, whether or not it's okay to kill them? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I take you to be a normal human being who would say that if there's a human out there who has a single cow hair, that doesn't suddenly uh, make it fine to kill them. I mean, on my own intuition, sure, yes, but I'm right. sure, that's fine. Right, and, and do you think most people probably share that intuition? Uh, possibly. And do you think that if I can show that someone's position cuts against that intuition, then all of the people who have that intuition are going to be unhappy with their position? But is that, but what I'm confused by here is it seems like um, Jack is saying something a little bit different, though. It's not that he's saying he has no idea. Like, if he saw someone, um, he, I think it sounds like he's saying he needs to see it to have, a, like, a view on it. He has uh, no moral perception of it currently. Well, the question, the question I asked was just whether he has any clue at all um, where in the trade equalization process value is lost. Um, and, I mean, it's fine to say, like, you can say whatever you want. If you want to say, I have no idea, I need to see it to, to know, you're free to say that, right? But I think that that seems wacky to most people. But I mean, there's, there's, you can still coherently say no and still, like, for instance, if I ask you, at what point does someone stop being tall? That doesn't mean you wouldn't know if someone who's seven foot tall is tall, right? You can still say, okay, that person's tall, but it's just when you get closer and closer is when you're like, I, I, I don't know where the cutoff is exactly. Right, right. No, it's, it's um, okay, so you don't, uh, you don't need to have some exact perfect uh, threshold. It's not like uh, you have to, like, solve the, uh, what, what do you call it, sorieties, sorties? Sorieties. Right. So, yeah. so the idea isn't to pinpoint some um, some exact threshold like down to the molecular level or something. Um, it could be that you answer a question of this sort with a gray area. Like, you know, if I ask you if I like trade equalize like a normal adult to a baby, and I ask, you know, at what point they lose, like, um, <laughs> in in your view, they should lose the right to drive. If you say you have no idea at all, that's going to look crazy, right? Because it's obvious that like an infant shouldn't be able to drive. But if you say, um, you know, I'm not sure the exact point, but it's like, you know, somewhere between maybe like 14 and 20, that's going to look like a lot less crazy, right? And right. I, so like, yeah. is, which one is Jack saying? Um, well, I asked him if he has any idea whatsoever where value is lost, and he said no. So I take it to be the case that he's saying, um, well, that he's saying just that, that he has no idea. But I, I don't understand why it should matter, right? Well, so if a person says there's, you know, it starts to get gray for me around here, right? Uh, what, what does that change? Well, the challenge... I don't the... understand what the disagreement <clears throat> is, right? You're saying, oh, I disagree with you, right, that... Um, uh, if a person had a cow hair, right, I disagree with you that that would be, like, within the get the gray area, right? Yeah, that would seem very wacky. Yeah, but the point is, that's just an, an epistemic issue, right? The person is just saying, well, I don't really know where I would draw the line, right? And somebody else is saying, I know where I would draw the line, right? I think what I I'm trying to understand is, why is that interesting? Um, so the reason that it would be interesting, now I, I don't know what could ever be interesting to you. I don't think it is interesting to you. Uh, the reason why it's interesting to me is because if we can ask these kind of questions and show that you have a position that most people don't resonate with, they're not going to want to hold the same position. Yeah, but, but what, what does it mean not want to hold, not want to hold the same epistemic position? No, just the, the, same, the, same, the, same, the same set of values. Wait a minute. I don't understand, right, what it means to not want to hold the values that you hold exactly. Right? Uh, so you, so, no, someone, someone could see what your values ultimately are and say, well, I don't agree. I don't hold the same values. Yeah, but, if the, but I, I don't understand. Uh, they and, presumably already have values with respect to that issue, right? 
so the idea um i feel i feel like i was making almost more progress when i was talking to jen although i'm happy to go back to talking to you well no you so, can go back to talking to him well yeah because i think that we're almost almost reaching understanding there um so jen uh you you understand that the idea here oh sorry that's my phone the idea here is to just show that these positions that support carnism tend to have conclusions that people are not satisfied with. Um, that is like the, that's the purpose generally of the argument. Do you, uh, do you follow that and see why that would be a valuable thing to do? Um, I, I understand what you're saying. As, as for whether it's valuable or not, I guess that's, that's more debatable because I think a lot of times people are coming up with rationalizations like ad like post hoc right they're not doing it they're, they're, the reason when you give the entity and they give an explanation a lot of time that's not the reason they actually meet right that's just something they came up with or that's how i'll justify it so even if you you know tear or you, you show that it entails some strange absurdity or whatever i don't know if that's actually going to help that much but i think it's a different um, question or, or when you say help do you mean to persuade the person who's being spoken to well presumably right that's what i well, oh no right? no so so very often when you're having this conversation the person you're talking to is just going to be like really dogmatic like the people who get into like i mean sometimes you can show someone where their own position leads like they'll say something like Oh, well, I think that value drops off below a certain intelligence threshold. Then you point to a human below that threshold and they go, well, wait, actually, I must not think that value drops off at that point. And you can sometimes get someone to um, reevaluate their moral position like that. But the thing that um, was kind of lacking in what you just said is that the goal doesn't just have to be to persuade the person you're talking to. The goal can also be to persuade the people who are listening. Yeah, but so like suppose no one was listening, right? You were just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jack. Oh, right, but the conversation uh, would just be over then, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think that I think that if I were talking to someone like Jack, um, and it just became clear after talking for a bit that like, you know, they're comfortable with whatever whatever kind of reductio we can get on the position, even if everyone else would be uncomfortable with it, they're comfortable with it. I mean, there's not going to be much room for persuasion there. Um, yeah, I guess so. I just, I don't, I'm not fully seeing, I suppose, um, where the exact issue is with Jack's specific position, well, when aside you, from when, just that. When you say issue, are you, are you thinking like a logical problem? Well, no, not a logical problem. It could be any sort of problem. Right. So it's like would, an unintuitive, uh, yeah. result of so, his, his position. So for example, would you consider it to be a problem if, uh, he if in his position there was some kind of moral evaluation that you disagree with uh can you be more specific yeah i mean he says x is fine and you think x is wrong um well i mean obviously i would just disagree with him right mm -hmm. but that that could be the extent of the issue that we're trying to show right so a position that from the start doesn't seem um, obviously disagreeable to someone listening in from the outside like oh okay he's okay with eating meat he's not okay with like eating humans or something seems reasonable enough the idea is that by like exploring it you can actually find that it probably has other consequences that you wouldn't be comfortable with so someone who's watching from the start and thinks hmm that those starting points seem reasonable enough like it's okay to um, kill animals it's not okay to kill humans by teasing out uh, what the view actually says um, by asking some of these questions uh, you could show that it says something that that person is in fact not comfortable with and uh, then they would not align with the view yeah I get that yeah so you can understand that being the purpose of the argument but it's not an argument though. or well I sorry I shouldn't call it an argument I should call it a di I should call it a dialogue process well yeah I mean if it's it just it seems to me the your so, point convince not necessarily always the person sometimes just people listening and just based sure. on some sort of whatever values or intuitions or whatever they hold um it just mm -hmm. like in terms of the you you have the entity written as a as an argument too right uh, yeah the argument though what is does that just, to demonstrate the, yeah so the argument is when someone tries to give a particular answer uh, some people don't understand that this answer produces a contradiction, so the, the argument is there to show that it does. 
Um, so sometimes people will say uh, humans have value, animals don't have value, and there's no point in the trade equalization process where value is lost. Um, so the argument just shows that that view produces a contradiction. Um, right. Mm -hmm. um, Wait. Pardon? I'm not, I'm not under... What? Oh, you cut out. Can anyone else hear him? No, nope. I can't hear him. Well, I guess we'll wait for him to get to a better Wi-Fi zone or whatever. Um, but just continuing with Jen, because um, it seems like we were getting somewhere. So you can... I, I, I don't understand, because you sound a bit apprehensive, but I'm not sure what is, um, what's weird to you here. So, like, you could just have a dialogue process where the goal is just to tease out the conclusions of um, positions uh, such that people can see whether they would agree with those positions or not. Yeah, no, that, that part is totally fine. I have no issue with that. Okay. Um, I, th I think it just, I think it seems to me that as an actual argument, which I know it's not meant to be like an argument, but as an actual one-to-one -one argument, it seems, um, not, I wouldn't say lacking, but it seems like it doesn't have as much force when someone just comes up with, oh, well, you know, just a brute fact or whatever they come up with. Yeah, well, I mean, there's no there's no moral argument that you're going to be able to make to someone who, you know, holds a given position and just accepts all of the consequences of that position, right? So I think that you're um, unintentionally, like, setting a bar for the argument that I've never set for, well, I mean, again, I should call it argument and dialogue flow process, but you're setting a bar for name the trait that, you know, I'm not setting and that would seem to me as like a non-realist, like a wacky bar to set. Um, the idea doesn't have to be that you can like run this dialogue flow process and then by the end, like any person is gonna be like, oh, well I should obviously become vegan. You can just create a tool that's gonna be, you know, more or less effective at showing the disagreeable aspects of positions so that others can understand if they would hold that position or not. Or if you have an interlocutor who, like sometimes you can persuade the interlocutor, that happens often actually, like there's street activists who will use the argument, or sometimes I'll talk to someone, kind of like I described before, you know, maybe they'll, uh, they'll give some kind of uh, trade initially, they'll be like, oh, they taste good, right? They'll say that's the point in the trade equalization process where value is lost is um, where uh, the being in question tastes good, and it's like, okay, so wait, you're saying that if humans tasted good, it would be fine to eat them? And then they'll go, oh, well, I mean, no, that actually, I, that, so and then you can say, well, then it can't be that value is lost just where, um, where the being in question is tasty, right? So sometimes the person who you're speaking to will have a change of values by seeing where their position leads. Sometimes they won't. But I think in all cases, if you have like a kind of just a general audience that's like a, just a sample of the general population, the, the carnist views you'll be able to show have conf uh, conclusions that uh, most people aren't happy with. And that can just be the extent of what the tool is for. Do you see, like, a problem with any of that? No, no, no. Again, I, I don't have an issue with using it as a tool like that. I don't think anyone... I don't think Jack would have an issue with it either. Um, I don't I'm know if to... I'd sp speak for him there. He seems, he seems like he does. I don't know if he's back or not, but... Yeah, you know, I'm Jack, here. Either? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'd... <laughs> just... Oh, just cut out again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. It's like, it was like the second uh, you started talking, you're, you're like, yeah, I'm here. So, you're gone. Yeah, I'm, but I'm just trying to understand, right? So, let's go back to the baldness case, right? If I say, I think this guy is bald, and somebody, and this person is not bald... Right. And somebody else says, well, I don't draw the line there. Right. What is the revision supposed to be? What do you mean by the revision? Well, they're saying that person has different ideas about what baldness is than I do. Right. So am I supposed to say, oh, I just... You, you cut out, you said, am I supposed to say I just... 
he's maybe he's out around or something like does he discord when he's outside doing stuff oh yeah i'm outside sorry yeah it's okay you're just cutting out a lot you you asked about what the revision is supposed to be what do you what do you mean when you say that yeah so Oh, it's so bad. It's like every time he like enthusiastically starts a sentence with yeah, so it just goes completely silent. Sorry. Okay. The per person, I think part of the problem is that there's a glitch on push to talk in the latest update mm. or one of the latest updates. Um, so the the person says he, I don't really have settled views as to where I would draw the line as to between as to what what counts as baldness and what doesn't count as baldness, right? And so somebody says, well, I think this person is bald and this person is not bald, right? But the first person doesn't agree, right? What exactly is supposed to, what is this kind of procedure supposed to do in a case like that, right? Uh, just let me make sure I understand the case. Like... The, the case. The case is you uh, you draw some line about baldness. The per the other person doesn't agree with your line uh, uh, about where baldness starts or stops. And then the question is, what are you therefore supposed to do in light of the fact that they don't agree with where you draw the line on baldness? Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to understand. Is like right. I, okay. What? So if but if that's if that's the question, I think that you just are like it's like you have a different idea of what the argument is. Uh, like again, I shouldn't I shouldn't call it an argument because there is a part of it that's an argument, but it's like a dialogue process. I think you have a wrong understanding of what the tool is supposed to do. Like, do you think that it's supposed to be the case that anyone who you run this dialogue process on is supposed to? by the end come to the conclusion that they ought go vegan? Like, is, is that what you think the tool is supposed to do? Well, see, what I was imagining was that here we, here we have a position, right, that um, the reason why, that somebody offers that the reason why it's okay to eat cows, right, is because of some irreducible property, right? And somebody, and the reason why it's not okay to eat humans is because of some irreducible property. Now imagine that there are like a thousand people with that position, right? Now then you run this dialogue and each one of them draws the line in what you're calling the trade equalization process in a different place all across the spectrum, right? Now what is the what is it that the bystander, what is the, I, I'm just not understanding what the aim is with respect to the bystander, right? The bystander presumably doesn't have settled views about whether it's okay to eat meat or not, right? No, he's, not necessarily. Say, they, might, they, might, they might have settled views, like they might be convinced currently that it's fine. Uh, but presumably not by appeal to that justify? I don't understand what you mean, sorry. Well, the justification given by these thousand people is all the same, right? It's that there's an irreducible property, right? Now, I take it you're not saying there's anything wrong with the property being irreducible, right? Like, you're not saying that's, that's uh, some kind of unreasonable position to hold. It doesn't right. seem so, unreasonable to me. Yeah. So you're not trying to convince the person that it's unreasonable for them to think that the reason why it's okay to eat things in some cases and not in others is ultimately going to be something irreducible. Well, right? well That's yeah, not what you're trying uh, the, yeah, to convince. Yeah, no. The aim of the argument is certainly not to show that, like, um, saying that values are, like, irreducible is some kind of problem or something. Is, is that what okay. you thought the aim of the argument is to do? Or the dialogue process is to do? No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rule out what the possibilities are. Well, uh, it's, I'm it's, trying to rule out things that are not the aim of the argument. Well, well wait, but when you say... Out what the right, so I, I don't know. It sounds so weird when you say, like, I'm trying to, by process of elimination, find out what the 
uh, dialogue process could possibly be trying to do when I've told you what it's trying to do. Jen seemed to understand what I was talking about. Uh, Jen, do you want to try me, to let me relay? Let me try explaining it. Let me try run, having a discussion with Jen. Then. So <clears throat> let's say we have out of that thousand P, right? Somebody gets very close, you know, is at the furthest extreme, right? Where it's only if there's like this tiny bit of um, humanness uh, that remains that it's okay um, to eat the human, right? Now, in both, at both extremes out of the thousand people, right, everybody's appealing to the same rationale, right? They're just saying that in the trade equalization, right, they draw the line at a different place, right? Now, presumably, the outcome is not supposed to be the bystander, that he should be convinced that it's irreducible, right? The aim of the dialogue is to try to convince them that they should actually include human beings in that set. Right. So the question is, what is it that they're appealing to, right, in the case of that most extreme case that is supposed to prompt them to do that? So I don't I don't know if you're talking to me or Jen. Are you trying to talk to me or to Jen? That was to Jen. OK. Um, so if I'm understanding this right, Essentially, to use like, I'm mean, maybe not the bald analogy, but say the tall analogy, and I want to say, um, everyone is tall, or and you say, well, okay, um, what in virtue of what do you decide this? And I say, oh, it's just some irreducible property. Um, or let me actually let me put it this way: I say some people above some height are tall, um, and everyone else isn't. And you say, well, um, at what in virtue of what is that the case? And I say it's irreducible. And so you just run the same thing, and you say, well there must be some cutoff, right? And I say, well, okay, I'll set it here. And then I can just say, well, if we added one, like, if we subtracted one nanometer from it, surely that's ridiculous. Therefore, your position is ridiculous too. And we can do that for any position, any cutoff for whatever we decide. Um, and it sounds like you're saying that regardless of, we had a bunch of people and we asked them, where do you put the cutoff? And they all gave different answers. Then what are we supposed to do once say someone some someone from far away is watching all of this what are they supposed to glean from the fact that there's a bunch of different cutoffs that are seemingly just mind dependent um moral evaluations from each specific person like what are they supposed to learn from that yeah because the point is they presumably have intuitions to begin with right when considering those cases so why would encountering the fact that other people have different intuitions from them why would we think that that in some way is supposed to move them to like revise their moral intuitions well i think i think in this case it might just be i think ask might just say that it might not have been they might have not really thought about it as much as they they seem they should have and so once they see these cutoffs yes. they think well you know this is you know this is may I'll, I'll, i won't include these people i won't include these people they'll just sort of better evaluate their own intuition mm -hmm. but then again i'm i, I don't know if that's what I don't know that is the idea. That. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, but you can do that with an imaginary. You don't need a real interlocutor. Well, yeah, right? for sure. Yeah, you could just say, well, what if the person said this? What if the person said this? What if the person said this? Right. Yeah, you sure. could you could do it with you could. I mean, it seems like you could say that about a ton of like any discussion. You could always like play the role of the other guy. No, but the point is, you're not if you're not trying to convince your interlocutor, right? Well, I'm, to be clear, to to, well, well, just one sec, to be clear, I am happy if the interlocutor becomes convinced, but it's not necessarily, uh, like, the goal or something that the interlocutor always be persuaded. There's some people who aren't persuadable on, like, any given moral question. But what about not, like, let's not limit this to the people who are unpersuadable. Say, like, a ra like a perfectly rational agent, someone who's not, like, clinging on to something. Can you rationally... Not, even, not necessarily a priori, but just like sort of with just some sort of argument or whatever, the quasi-argument, 
convince them from just based on their own moral intuition. It just seems impossible, right? Um, sorry, c convince. I, I don't totally understand the question. Pardon? So, like, suppose you were trying to, like, ideally, let's say you suppose you're talking to some guy and they're they have no, they're not really like, um, you know, how some people are just super committed. They won't change their mind. But just uh, they're an yeah. ideal, rational person. And you're trying to show them, say they, they hold Jackson to you, and you say, well, um, here's the, there's, there's, there's this issue with it. And they say, well, so what? That's, that's fine within my moral intuition. It just seems... Well, well, it seems like ideally rational is probably still compatible with whatever values, right? Like, are we taking that to be the case? Well, I suppose it depends on what you, what you take values to be, but, I mean, sure. Because, yeah, if you can have an ideally rational person with any values, then it might not persuade them depending what their values are. Well, I mean, not any values. Like, certainly, the, whole, the whole idea... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, the whole idea is, like, we have some idea about what people's values are and what kind of things they will and won't be comfortable with. If we were in a radically different world, we might not be able to use this kind of tool. In In this world... It seems to do work, right? But um, it could, if you could come up with some possible world where people have like really different intuitions about morality, and it would be less effective or not effective. Um, sure. Wait, so Jack, where exactly was the issue again? In terms of, I think, since Ask said it's it's not necessarily about the the interlocutor. Where would your issue be? Well, no, because I was just, when he said, well, what if I put in, what if I changed, you know, just one hair to a hair, right? It doesn't yeah. seem like there's any need to ask me that question, right? Because I might say, I don't know at that point. So, yeah. so like, sorry to cut off. So, like, here's here's a good example, just so you can get some insight into the world that I operate in and why this is useful, okay? So, there's a... A uh, well-known YouTuber, he's got, I think, like half a million subscribers, whose name is Hunter Avalon, right? And I'm sure, um, uh, like, you, Jack, as someone who I, I believe is pretty firmly, like, a left-winger, would probably really not like this guy's uh, politics, like, political YouTuber. Um, but, uh, anyway, he's, this guy's down to have a discussion about veganism. Now, I'll end up running this process, right? And, um... I can tell you that some amount of people in his audience, like he's going to end up generating some kind of answer that has really wacky conclusions. Like when he's going to say the point in the trade equalization process is like when it's not human or something. And we're going to get some crazy reductio about like killing beings that are just subjectively identical to humans, but have different shells around them or something like this. Now, a large chunk of people in his audience are going to go, well, that's an insane position. I don't, I definitely, and again, insane just means out of line with their values. I don't agree with that. I've got to reevaluate what I think. I, I think I might need to find a position that actually makes sense to me here, right? So the idea is there's some kind of, like, if, if you're, if you view, <laughs> like, increasing veganism in the world as a good thing, there's some kind of pragmatic utility to a tool like this, and that's just an instance of it. Does that seem, like, clear to everybody? Um, yeah, that was clear to me before. Although I, I think I came into it assuming that it was it was meant to be an argument. But I mean, yeah. Well, the uh, the confusion is that there's part there's part of it that's an argument, but the only part that's actually like a syllogism is the part that's um, designed for like when someone tries to give a particular answer where they say humans have values, animals don't, and there's no point in the trade equalization process where values lost. Like, to anyone who's probably, like, spent time with, like, philosophy or logic or whatever, it's going to be obvious that that just is not coherent. But a lot of people actually try to say that, right? When you actually interact with, like, the general public, you get that. So it's good to just have a clear argument where you can just show why that produces a contradiction in a nice, clear way, right? So there, so there is part that's a syllogism, but it's not, like, the, the whole... Uh, all of name the trade as a syllogism. It's kind of like a dialogue process, and there's a syllogism that comes up at one point if certain conditions are met. Yeah, and so in terms of like what Jack said, suppose he said, I think this is what he said. He said he doesn't know. There's just some point where in this you know trade equalization, the the irreducible fact, and it might not actually it might be different irreducible facts for different stages, but I mean regardless, sure. There's some there's some point where there's just no thing and he just doesn't know where it is exactly mm -hmm. um 
Yeah, if, if you say that you have absolutely no idea, the reductio is that apparently you're uncertain if value's lost when we're talking about a human with a single cow hair. Well, I mean, we don't have to... We can we can reduce it a little... It doesn't have to be the extreme size, right? Just somewhere like where, you know, at what, like say there's a, there's a torso or a brain of a cow or the head of a cow and a human body or something. R right, maybe but... Maybe in those, those cases he, he might be more... Mm -hmm, but, um, but, not sure, but suppose okay. he did say that. Like, I, I just don't see what, what benefit or there, what like idea we would like appeal to to convince the onlooker that oh, this is ridiculous. Well, I think the position being um, that I'm uncertain where values lost at all. Uh, the thing that would persuade people that that's a wacky view to hold is just showing a being who's extremely close to a human who they by that logic are uncertain about the value of well let's not say it all let's just say there's a gray area somewhere in the middle but that's but that's slightly different so before we go to that can we just uh understand that with the i have absolutely no clue where value is lost there's an unpalatable conclusion there to like like virtually everybody well i don't know if jack would agree with that would you agree with that um yeah, I think I'd be okay with that, assuming, you know, we, we allow extreme cases like a human who has one, you know, cow hair. Yeah, I mean, like, it can be, you can make it like one cow, like, like a patch of cow skin or something. Like, I don't know, it can be more than a hair. But, like, the point is, if yeah, you have, sure. like, I, I don't, maybe that's the difference between some insane, insanely microscopic change and one that's a bit bigger is, like, meaningful to you in some way that I'm not appreciating. Like, okay, but. Um, no, 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 it's fine. But, like, the idea is just if you have absolutely no clue, there's just, like, a massive amount of beings we could pick that just are obviously going to have value to everyone who's watching. And if you say you don't have any idea if they have value, that's where they say, well, that's... Then your answer to that question just seems bad to me. Like, I can't get on board with that. Well, yeah, that's fine. Right. So, um, what's... Although, I'm not... Looking back, I'm not... Well, I don't know if, I don't know if Jack's still in here, but... Uh, yes, he is. Or wait, Jack, were you saying this in a kind of, um, you know, like when sometimes people will say things like when they're talking about counterfactuals, they'll say something like, oh, well, if this happened, then this would have happened. And some people are like, it's not fictionalist about it, but they're really just skeptical. They have any epistemic access to what they would feel like given this counterfactual. Is that kind of what you were saying? Or are you just saying straight up like, oh, if someone came up to me and they were all human aside from like one, you know, skin cell of a cow uh then i would have no idea like if i should kill them or not well no i just i don't i'm just sort of not really seeing what turns on that because presumably there's going to be some point at which somebody is going to say something i would draw the line here where it's presumably not going to be wacky as um isaac put it for the vast majority of viewers right yeah Wait, did you, um, sorry, wait, did you just presume that there's a line you can draw that won't be wacky for most people? Oh, yeah. Why I'm would, why would you, well, I'm, I'm very skeptical of that. Why would you make that assumption? Because I think that the number of people who um, don't have a problem eating meat is, like, vast. Right, but you could you could say that about anything that was like normal at some point in history. Like it's not it's not clear to me at all that there's actually like some kind of um, there's some kind of answer you can give to that question about where values lost that's going to be satisfactory to most people. Now, we don't have data on how most people react, so we're not no one's going to be able to like win that. But I'm just planting a flag there that I mean. I tend more to think that there probably isn't even a line that people would be happy with. I think that every attempt to draw a line seems to make people uncomfortable. And not and saying I don't even know where the line is seems to make people uncomfortable too. But yeah, but a trade equalization isn't a line though, right? Um the, well the process isn't a line? Like the process is not no, because, a line. Because there's it's not a linearly linearly ordered thing right so like certain you can you can swap traits in different orders right so sure, in one yeah. sequence that's it, it on down the line that's okay but then in different sequence that's where it becomes okay and so forth 
Uh, I'm yeah. Well, like, are you just asking it like if the order that you alter traits in matters? Well, no, no. I'm just saying there is there is. It's it's not one line. It's actually many many different lines. What do you mean? It's you, many like, many. Like, different suppose lines. I said like I can't say I, like if. Oh, you mean? Sorry, I think I might understand. Actually, are you saying that the same person who um who has has one view about like let's say that they just think uh value is lost when intelligence is lost are you saying that that's technically a massive amount of lines because based on how we order the trade equalization process that point could be at different places um yeah that's kind of what i'm saying it's just that when we talk about there being lines, we, we, it seems like you're asking for a, a example of like the, the creature or whatever that would be at that line but it seems like um we can have multiple lines where if, if what I if what I think is most important is like you said intelligence then I can have a, many different iterations of this, different things that as long as the intelligence thing is you know the intelligence factor is right all of those are the lines right but there's not one specific thing that's the line I, I'm not I'm not totally sure if I'm following I, I guess it's just the language I don't know what you mean when you're saying this thing is is the line like wh what do you what do you mean exactly like so, like get, like let's say um, in the example of the you and Jack were using, um, give me an example of where I could draw the line. You could draw the line at like you know an IQ of seventy five or something. Okay, so what we're doing is we're talking about one specific. Tra we're just talking about one specific um, um, trait, right? But in Jack's case, the trait was just some irreducible thing. So we have to appeal to not a trait, but some iteration of a human slash cow, right? I don't know that he said that the trait is irreducible. I think that he said that the his his valuing of something is irreducible. Like the value, uh, the, the value itself is irreducible. Am I not understanding Wait, him right? I thought Jack was saying just the, the trait was just that it's okay to eat it, and that that's a, it's a, there's no further facts for that. That's right. Well, well, no. By the trait, what we mean by the trait is the point in the trait equalization process where value is lost. Well, okay, so like under Jack's view, like we couldn't, well, like give me an example of what you think were well, a possible line, because we can't appeal yeah, to Yeah, you can say like, in, well, so one view uh, that you could give would be that it's like an intelligence thing. But that's not what he's saying, though, right? I didn't it's say not... I didn't say that that's what he's saying. But yeah, I'm, sure. I'm sorry. I'm asking, like, given his view, what's an example of a line you could draw? Oh, he he doesn't appear to be drawing a line. What I'm what well, like, I'm under like in principle, I mean. Well, what I'm under, I, I, I'm not, okay, I'm not totally sure I'm following what you're saying. What I understand him to be saying is that he just doesn't know where value drops off. Yeah, yeah, but, like, suppose he could give you a line, right? What would be an example of the, the line? Because I'm just trying to explain what sure, I meant by Sure, uh, intelligence below a certain level. But wait, wait, but intelligence, he, he's not appealing, there's no, the trait he's talking about doesn't appeal to other traits. There's no tr further fact of the matter, right? It's a proof fact. Well, by a line, um, what I mean is like the point in the trade equalization process where value is lost. Yeah, but he's, he, he, just told, he just said that the value is lost based on this irreducible trait. So wherever that's lost. Right. No so is, so, so, matter, so right? is the view just that we don't like it, it seems like it's either the case that we know where value is lost or we don't know where it's lost. So is the view just saying we don't know where it's lost? Well, no, I, I mean... He could be saying that, but I, I don't. You're think trying to index the where it's lost by the property that's being dropped, but the point is that Jack is not referencing any other property, so you need to ref you need to index it by the, the creature that is there. We'll, we'll wait. Exactly. If, we'll, we'll wait, but then there's just not an answer to the question of at what point it's lost there in could that be. process. Well, there could be. It just have to be. It wouldn't be one line. It'd be like many, many lines. I'm not sure I follow that. So it, just to make sure we're on the same page. So if the question is. Uh, at what point in the trade equalization value pro uh, sorry at what point in the trade equalization process value is lost um, are we are we getting an answer to that or is it like not an answer to that I mean we could like suppose we had um, a sort of a an infinite never well, not necessarily infinite, like countably infinite set of all the different iterations of swapping between humans and cows and then I uh, given sort of infinite amount of time, go through each one and say oh this one has value this one doesn't have value and the point there is that there's no line per se i'm drawing it's more so that i'm just going through and saying this one brutally does have value this one doesn't have value and so forth 
Um, so is the view that there's like I, I guess I'm just not clear what it's supposed to be saying. So, like, if there is a line, I'm just wondering what the line is, and if there. Okay, is... let, let me put it this way. Um, on the, when we talk about a line, what axis are we looking at when we're talking about the line? So, like, if we were talking about intelligence, you'd say, okay, we're cutting off at 75 IQ, right? Yeah. But Jack's thing is that it's just some irreducible trait. So we just cut it off based on our mind-dependent assessment of where it stops being, you know, uh, morally valuable or whatever. Right. And are we able to get any, like, account of where that is? Or from our perspective, do we just have no clue where he draws that line? Well, I mean, you have to, you have to ask Jack that. But, I mean, I don't know if that's super relevant in well, the, the sense that... Well, that, that's, it's relevant to the dialogue process because if we have no idea where that line is drawn then we're back to a position where, from our perspective, we can't tell what the view says about um, a being who's just, like, one step into the process. Well, okay, Let, just to make this easier, let's just, let's just say Jack, on a case-by-case -case basis, because he's a particularist, right, can tell you whether it has value or not. So if you give him the example of the human with the one hair of a cow, you'll be like, no, that, that is value. But then if you go into further into, like, middling territory, then you'll be like, well, no, that one doesn't, so forth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on, on that view, what's the answer to the question, like, meant to be? Sorry, say that again? So, like, the question about where value's lost, on that view, do we just not know where value's lost? Well, the, the point is there's not, like, there's not one line where it's lost, right? Um, what do you mean when you say there's not because one line where it's lost? the only way that works is if there's one specific variable we're, we're using the axis for so when we talk about just strictly intelligence then there is clearly a line anything below 75 is not morally uh valuable anything well, above wait is, right? i think i think there might be some kind of confusion so by the line like all we mean is like we have all the properties of the animal and we have all the properties of the human and we start changing the human's properties to match the animal and we're just asking right. uh, we're just asking what has to be changed before value goes away well, yeah, yeah, but I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is that in this case, there's not one thing that would have to be changed. Yeah, it could be more than one thing. That's fine. Well, no, no, no. Not, it's, 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 what I mean to say is that it's not There's no one, one axis. property. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to like, be one property. It could be, like, multiple properties. There's not even properties. a set of properties. It's, it's more like there's, depending on what creek, let's call it a creature, or whatever, a human cow, we creep on a case-by-case -case basis, some have some, have some, uh, moral value and some don't mm -hmm. okay there's so, no hard line where we can say anything below this property or this set of properties or whatever does have moral value and this one doesn't oh yeah i mean it could be like maybe there's like if we set up some equalization it could be like oh it's lost here and then it's regained and then it's lost or something we're just wondering if you can give an account of a place where it's lost in the um in that process it's just a brute fact i'm sorry to interject but it would just be some yeah, just some brute fact, right? Right. Like just, well, right. but wait. So there's. So when I ask the question, at what point is value lost? Am I given information that I'm able to tell where the point is, or I just don't know from but my perspective? That's the point. That there is no. There's no one point, though, right? We just agree, right? I don't. I, I don't know if I understand what you're saying when you say that. Um. Okay. So if I'm saying, um, if we're doing like a, we're looking at two dimensions, right? And I want to know some shade what what values for x and y are um below some value of x and y some shaded area exists i can't just tell you where the x value below it where it's shaded i have to also give you the y and similarly we have multiple dimensions you can't just give one place where one line where there's um sort of below this is you know a no value this and above it is there is value you have to do multiple dimensions right Again, I'm just I'm not sure if I'm understanding, but I don't I don't see how it really like poses any kind of problem. Like it's either that I'm given some kind of account of where the value's lost or I'm not. And like all I want to understand is like where in that process it goes away because it must go away at least once at some point in that process, right? Well, yeah, he could just trivially give you like really obvious examples, right? Like if like the example you gave up, the the hey, one hair, you'd be like, yeah, that, that still has value. Yeah, so we want, but yeah, we're looking for the example uh, like closest to a human, right? 
So like we, we yeah. Human. So like if we start modifying the human, um, I guess I'm yeah. just, I'm just not I'm not. For, there's something that I think we're like talking past each other with here. So like let me just make sure that we agree with the same thing. So like we agree that there must be a point where value is lost, right? We agree that somewhere in the process of equalizing traits, value is lost. At least one. Uh, not necessarily yes. just one, but yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So then, um, I want to know what that point is um yeah that so that's so that's the question and then are we given like an account of where that is or are we not given an account of where that is but the the point is that he it doesn't seem like on the particulars to count that you do need to give an account uh well need is a weird word like I well, don't... okay well uh let me put it different there's on on jack's account it sounds like there's many uh sort of dimensions and different lines and so there isn't one thing you can just appeal to and say oh this is where the line is right because they're just brute fact so if you could give an account then he they wouldn't be brute facts anymore because they would be in virtue of something else right so if he said oh well the line is when the cow has this property then that's the the, the moral value is intrinsically tied to that property so it can't be brute anymore right um, it seems to me that it still has to be the case for any being in that process that it either has value or it doesn't have value, right? Well, no, yeah, we're granting that. But it's just the reasons is there's no further fact of the matter, just brutally why at one point... It's like when we talk about the Sorites paradox, um, some people will say, here's the line, and people will say, okay, well, why? And they say, oh, there's no reason, it's just a brute fact, that's where we're drawing the line. Um, and similarly, you might say, oh, all of these on the left, they do have moral value, and all of these on the right don't and you say well why 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 are you drawing the line there and he's like oh just oh but back. okay so, okay wait now i see the conclusion so we're not we're not asking why you're drawing the line there we're just trying to understand where the line is well i mean why does it matter though right if it's just a brute fact but, it could be oh but, just, but, because like, suppose he just said like not not including extreme examples so obviously then someone might be well, like wait that's a little weird but suppose he just well, said, I, I can, well, I can answer like, that in the yeah middle. well what wait so you asked I, I i almost forgot what you said you asked something like why would why would that matter well the whole idea is that like asking them to draw the line it's their attempts to do that that um lead to um lead to them like giving positions that most people um are not aligned with so well, that's okay, that's sure, like sure. the point agree, of it yeah i agree with extreme examples but like suppose jack says oh it's somewhere like in the middle gray area i, I just haven't really you know you'd have to give me a case-by-case -case example and i'll tell you that doesn't seem anything ridiculous about that on first glance, right? Yeah, I just wouldn't know what exactly is being said there. Like, I would just kind of ask him if he could spell it out at all. Like, does he have any but idea the, the, where it is? That's the point. You can't spell it out. Well, if he can't spell it out at all, then we're... Uh, so it's well, Because I, there's not one point, right? It's not like one thing we can appeal to and say, here's yeah, the it does. It doesn't have to be like... Uh, like, are you thinking that the view has to be like like universalist or something? No, no, no. Like, let me let me use the, the, the classic example you're... You're definitely familiar with it for the particulars right if i said you know clearly there's take this unfunny joke and this funny one and there has to be some you know point if we i don't know how you trade equalize jokes but suppose you could there must be some point where this becomes funny just because you can't tell me exactly where it is doesn't mean anything right no but i think that the kind of thing you're asking them to draw a line with respect to is actually relevant so i think there's cases where not being able to draw the line doesn't uh doesn't have like uh any weird impact on on people's intuitions and i think there's other cases where it seems really wacky so if you say i don't know when exactly this joke would stop becoming funny it could be that that's a case where most people are going to go oh that doesn't seem too weird if you say i don't have any idea in this process where values lost that could have implications that actually are weird for people so the 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 thing we're actually trade equalizing is relevant there yeah, I just don't see the in the in the middling case where he says some gray area in the middle, why that would be unintuitive. Um, well, to me, there's I can't really say anything about it until I know what the view is saying. So, like, what I would ask is, do you have like any idea at all? Could you give me a rough idea of where that point is? Now, if they can't give any idea at all, that's where we're just like, okay, well, I, I can't even tell according to their view if it's wrong to kill a human with like one animal skin cell or whatever your example was. Um, but if they can give like some kind of account, even like a rough account of where the gray area starts, then that's what I would want to hear. Yeah, I, I think I'm just, I'm not fully seeing how that, like that just wouldn't be compatible with Jack's view, right? Because then it wouldn't be a brute fact. Um, um, well, wait, so they, 
I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I understand the details of Jack's view, but it's like the way I'm looking at it is like there's questions that one either like can answer or can't answer. And like if you give a certain answer to them, there's certain implications. And if you don't give an answer, there's certain implications. So like the implication of saying I have absolutely no idea where values lost, we've like been through that already. And then if you give any kind of specific idea of where values lost, there's going to be like specific implications to those answers. And if you just try to be like vague about it and just say, oh, it's lost somewhere, that's just going to be a situation where I would seek more clarity about what you're saying. Um, but I mean, but, no, go I ahead. Mean, Jack, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, what I'm not getting is this. Let's say he draws a line somewhere, right? And, and then you point out some unintuitive fact about it, right? You can just then brutally say, well, okay, then those unintuitive facts, now they're part of the new line. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he can always just do that. So to account for any unintuitive facts, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm not sure that I follow. Are you just saying if I show an uncomfortable position, he can just move the line? Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Then, then, we, then we just, like, rerun the process. And if you do that, like, ten times, and they keep just giving lines that have really bad conclusions, then people are going to go... I don't think I can get on board with like any of this guy's attempts to draw the line at all. Wait, but no, but each line is only going to work in the case that it works. What do you mean when you say that? Like you can't. You, there's what, no universal what, what quick, line, so you keep wait, wait, just keep what, running what, what, it. What, doesn't matter, right? What, no, no, no. What Quick Brown Fox was saying is that the person who's drawing the line, once they see the conclusion of the line, uh, at, they actually change where the line is. So wait, the but, idea but, is if they the point is. The, the idea is just if they change their position, then you would just start over. You would just ask again. But I don't think it's, it's more they're changing their position. I think they're saying, well, this, this specific thing, the reason, you know, it might be, this is, this is the line here. Wait, I think but... there's a misunderstanding. The quick Brown Fox is talking about someone actually changing their position. He's talking about them giving one answer for where the line is, and then upon seeing some consequence of drawing the line, they're actually changing where they think the line is. Is that not correct, uh, Quick Brown Fox? Um, yeah, I'm based, yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, I, uh, whatever he talks about this, like, I, the line maybe is not the right example, but, like, each particular case, I think that's the best way of putting it. If there's a particular case which I left out that's unintuitive, I can just put that particular case in into the whatever, whichever side, value or non-value. Well, it sounded to me, what I understood you to be saying was that um, someone gives you some account of where the line is, you show them uh, some kind of conclusion to drawing the line there, they actually find the conclusion uh, unpalatable, and then they change their account of where the line is. That's what I took you See, to be saying. I think he's just saying that the that the line for the particular case, and then you find what, some. What do you mean? Sorry, the you line, try to wait, apply. Wait, wait, wait. When you say there's just language that doesn't make sense there. When you say the line for the particular case, what we're talking about with the line is the line is in the place in the trade equalization process where value is lost. That's what. So I don't know what you mean when you say the line for the particular case. So we could we could have a bunch of different. Um, creatures that between cow and human that we might say are um, morally valuable, right? Sure. So I think he's saying you find one, like if somebody explains, well, this one, this one is morally valuable, you can say, well, wait a second, this has X, Y, and Z property, so if that's the line, then these aren't in. They could just say, "Well, no, that's not. A, it's not actually a matter of properties. We just include all these other creatures that we think Wait, intuitively some, might be there's something really weird about the morally valuable. There's something really weird about the framing there. Like, so sorry, what's the answer that they give initially when you ask where in the trade equalization process value is lost? I think they're just saying they don't know. Yeah. Wait. So if they say that they have no clue at all, that's where we get that really strange conclusion where. Okay, so if we have a being who's one step away from a human, you're not clear if that has value or not. Well, that's but that doesn't follow from just saying I don't know where the line is. If you say if you say if you say I have absolutely no idea where the line is, then you don't know if the line includes that being or not. Wait, wait, but just, just saying you don't know. Wait, 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 but you, you but what ask you saying? Well, sorry, go, go ahead. I was just gonna, it, it literally is entailed. If you say I have no clue at all, then for any being in that range, you don't know. But sorry, go, well, go ahead, Jen. It's just, just problematic because when you're talking, when you say no clue at all, it's not clear. If you said every every um, possibility 
is equally likely to be the line, then what you what you're saying follows. But if they're just saying I have absolutely no clue, that you could just interpret that as being, oh, there's, I have there's there's certain um, there's a range, say like gray zone where it's there where it has to be, but I just have no clue within that zone where it be. Right. All of those are equally possible. Right, and we're talking right. about if you say that the whole of the trade equalization process is the gray zone. Right. Wait, but again, wait, I think again, we're... Go ahead, Rick. Sorry, I just... I, I feel like there's some confusion. Let me just try to give, like, an example. Because the whole point... Yeah, I think Tristan's trying to say it. The whole point is just, like, you can, like, go case by case, right? But maybe, you know, that's going to take a lot of work. So let, let's go with some example where I'm trying to say would be, like... Well, let's just say I, my initial starting point will say, well, okay... Roughly, it's about intelligence, okay? And you're gonna say, well, look, that means you, you can like, give an example. Like, like, no, if, if so, no, 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 if, if someone said roughly, I would try to get more clarity of what they're talking about. No, the point is, I'm not, it's, a, it's case by case. So then when you give examples that go counterintuitive, I just say, no, no, those are, you can just brutally on the other side. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's just N what- No, I, 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 don't, I don't get what you're saying there. So if we're asking I mean, I, I guess I'm just not seeing what it is that could be, like, confusing to you guys about this. It's just, like, there's, like, let, okay, I want to try with Jen, because I think I was having the most um, success with Jen. Jen, what is what is the criticism here? Because I'm, I'm not understanding what the it's, criticism I think is supposed it's to that be. We're, it's, we're almost smuggling in a kind of generalist view on trades when we're doing this trade equalization process. Wait, why would, why would that be the case? Because if we're saying we need to draw a line somewhere then we have to appeal to some other fact. And what they're saying is, well, oh no, we're just appealing to brute fact. Wait, what do, you, so you what, do you, ask, what do you mean you'd have to appeal to some other fact? When you, so when you say somewhere, you're, you're wait, referring just, just to just a let me, trait. Just one person, please. Let me just talk to Jen, please. So when you're saying, well, basically what Toby said, but when, when you're asking Jack, right, where, um, where's the line, presumably when he says, here's the line, you might not, you might not ask why that's, that's the line. You might mm -hmm. just forget that and just, to come up with a, 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 a counter example or some reductio or whatever right but the point is that under his view he just has to go on a case-by-case -case basis so he can't even tell you where there's a line because there is no one line right um wait so the criticism is that uh generalism is being smuggled in so i don't see how that's the case it doesn't um there being a line doesn't entail that there's uh that um the, the person is a generalist so a particularist can say, um, you know, we can just have this big range of situations, right? Uh, we start with the uh, humans being holocausted at the end, it's animals being holocausted. Um, the particularist could just say, like, these ones I'm, uh, I'm okay oh. with, these ones I'm not okay with. Um, the, no, no, the line, yeah, yeah. The so line is just the point where, uh, where they become uh, okay with it. It's not like it has to be some... Yeah, this is what Quick was saying, right? So Quick was saying that suppose we suppose you he, I give you um, as a particularist again it's a weird call it a line because it's not a line but I have to say I say uh, well this maybe we should hash example. that out because what do, what do you mean when you say it's not a line like all 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 that I mean I don't I don't in fact I never use the word line I just say point in trade equalization process where values lost like surely Dave, that that's, exists that's whether not the you're case right because what if what if there's like you have, have you seen functions where there's like infinitely many gaps between um, uh, well, I, I mean, I don't want to give specific examples, but you're, you're, I think you're imagining it as basically being a line where you put a point and then and but, I don't but think beyond so. that point. I, I don't, I don't think well, I'm, I'm doing that. Um, you so could, how are you like imagining it? If you could like imagine it like so, mathematically or geometrically? Well, I'm just imagining like a big series of frames and in each one you change one more property about the human. And I'm just picturing there's got to be a moral evaluation that the person would make about each one of those frames and we're just trying to understand um roughly we're trying to understand where they start saying that uh value uh, is gone that they don't care for example about murdering the being anymore right so this this uh, when you say like Cause, a snapshot because just, just just to be clear you'd agree that there there is going to be for all of those frames either value or not value regardless of whether you're a particularist or not surely well yeah yeah i agree with that that's, yeah. that's obviously true but what i'm saying is there's not like a, let's say we, we went through the equalization process and there's not there's not one linear order we follow but let's just say we pick one 
And then Jack says, sure. for the first one, that has value. And the second one, that doesn't have value. Okay, that one has value. And just back and forth between value and non-value, right? So then when you say you try to come up with a reductio, I don't know how that would even work, right? Because there's not, there's not some nearby case you can appeal to because for every other one, he says no, yes, no, yes, right? Um, well, you just want to, so you'd want to find out where value is lost and you'd want to um, get the example that's as close to the human as possible. So that would be like the general thing you try to do there. Well, I think this is what Quick was saying, right? Because any, because like any example you give, he can just say, oh no, that, that, that one really does have value. But then you're like, well, okay, how about this one? No, that one doesn't, this one does. And he just backs him back and forth, right? So there's no point where you can appeal to some other um, or reductio, because you just be like, oh, that one, no, that one does have moral value. Well, wait, but when he says that a given being doesn't have moral value, that could very well be the reductio right there. But I, I mean, yeah, if he says something crazy, sure. But we're, let's let's assume he does. Like, if he says like, oh yeah, every everything that's not ex like a, uh, um, that's not strictly human can kill, then obviously right. that, that would be ridiculous. But we'll we'll let's just let's grant that he doesn't do that, and he's he's like, giving uh, what most people, the average person, would agree with, right? Wait, and going but, through each one, snapshot, and saying, "Well, we didn't see." You're cutting out. Sorry, snapshotting and what? So suppose like we were doing snapshot uh, ends of the equalization process, and each one he's saying, "Yep, no, yes, no," and there's he, he let's say he aligns with what most people intuitively believe. There doesn't seem to be a reductio anymore, right? I I think that there's an assumption when you say that, that you're able to actually give an account that most people intuitively align with. Well, were you, were you, maybe I'm misremembering, but were you the one saying, or maybe it was Jack who's saying it, that there's a general intuition most people would find agreeable? Um, well, it could be the case that it's an intuition that once explored, most people don't find agreeable. But we are exploring, right? Because Jack's going through every single example and saying, yep, no, so forth. Right, right. But the way you just uh, spoke, you suggested that um, there's going to be some account we can give of what beings have value in there and which ones don't that um, the majority of people will agree with. And I'm just saying that that's uh, not necessarily true. I don't know why we would assume that would be the case. Well, okay. Well, it, regardless like, of the logistics of that, it seems like there's no reductio in that case, right? Well, that's what, not going to be it, immediately well, it would, obvious. Like, there's, there's obvious well, it, ones like, it could oh, very well be. disabled people, it, right? Well, wait, it could very well be. I just it don't see how it would. Well, it just depends what beings they're saying are valueless. Well, sure. It just seems like, well, first of all, it would probably be really tedious to go through a bunch of these snapshots. But regardless, it seems like any example you can come up with a reductio that's not already been explicitly said, they can just say, oh, no, no, that one really is, does have moral value, like Quig was saying, right? Wait, but right. if they start giving examples of beings that don't have value in that process, like what would those beings be, right? Because you're saying you're saying uh, there if he if he just gives these kind of random answers about like this one has value, this one doesn't, this has value, this doesn't, that like a he's going to be able to do that in a way that actually aligns with most most people's intuitions. I don't know why you would expect that. And then um, uh, there's a B also. Um, but I don't, I don't know why you would expect, oh yeah, and, and B, that I'd be able to point out the reductio without actually knowing what beings he's saying that about, right? So I'd have to know specifically what beings he's talking about to give a reductio. I can't give a reductio when you give me a view that doesn't say anything about specific beings. It just says some have value, some don't. Well, no, I'm talking about specific beings. Right, but I would need, but you're, you're not, like, I don't know what, like, I'd need to literally know what being you're talking about to give a reductio. Yeah, yeah. So, like, for instance, suppose um, I, I gave or Jack gave, like, oh, um, a uh, human head and a cow's body, but really low IQ. And you say, oh, well, so if, if low IQ is the problem, then what about this? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. That, that well, well wait, but, but that, that being right there, that, I mean, I don't think most people would be comfortable even with that. Well, no, no, that sounds an like. This is just a simple example. I'm not actually wait, but I think, I, think, I, think, I think we're talking past each other, and this might actually make it clear, like, uh, so if someone gave an example like that, right? Like, that is not going to align with what most people think, as far as I can tell. Most people are going to say, if you have, like, basically just, like, a disabled person with some, like, cow appendages or something, that it's not okay to just murder that being. 
No, yeah, that was just an example. I didn't actually say that he would actually say that has more value. Right, right. I, 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 under, using that I, as I understand because... that. But, but, but uh, Jen, the point that I'm trying to get across is that whatever uh, examples they give, they're probably going to be like susceptible to reductio in the same kind of way. But as no, that. that's the point. They can't be susceptible uh, unless it's a direct reductio. You can't appeal to other cases. No, no, no it, I'm not right? talking about appealing to other cases. I'm talking about the, okay, ca the yeah. case itself being the reductio. I mean, sure. Well, why would they do that? Sorry. What? Why would they ever, like, knowingly give a case where they know it's unintuitive and say it's not as valuable? Like well, they maybe, say, maybe they, they maybe those are just their values. Okay, but yeah, but that's yeah. that's still problematic, right? Because then the but, other person who's listening will hear that and say, oh, I can still be a, I can still hold the same position, but for me, I'll just brutally pick that one to be exactly. true. Well, wait a sec, wait a sec. So uh, I think, no, I, I really think that there's some kind of talking past each other going on here because I'm not seeing any like critique of this right now. So what you said a while ago is that there's some kind of generalism being assumed. Is that still on the table or have we moved past that? Well, the generalism was about the, 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 the line and so forth, but I think, I think you, you, um, you explained your view a little better, and I uh, maybe the generalism wasn't being uh, smuggled in, but okay. I think but the point is it okay? Well, 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 I just wanted to ask in that case what the critique is if it's not that. So the critique is like the thing that Quick and I was just talking about. If so we're doing this example where someone's going case by case and saying this has value, this doesn't, and so on, and then someone's listening, and they hear them say, "Oh, this doesn't have value," they think, "Well, wait a second, that that seems a little intuitive." That doesn't has no bearing because they can just take the particular view and for that specific case say it does have value. There's no there's no problem. They just swap yes and no's where they feel like it fits their moral intuition, right? Yeah. So if someone if someone says yeah. So if some if someone is listening and they just want to um, they they don't want to try to like consider their view overall and they just want to adjust any specific thing that sounds crazy to them. Like, that's okay. It's just the argument's not going to be, like, persuasive to a person who's doing that, though. Like, the whole idea is that's to... Cool. We're assuming they're particularists, right? Exactly. Because if it's not particularist, then, I mean, obviously they wouldn't find any of this convincing because they're not particularists, right? Well, well, no, a particularist could still come to the conclusion. They might start seeing, um, they could start looking at the kind of beings that are said to not have value and start reflecting and come to a conclusion that they don't know that there's any point where value's lost. Why, the, why, couldn't, the whole why couldn't why couldn't that happen with a particularist? Because well, they would just say, one, "Why one not just can add hot?" Please a bunch talk others. to one person at a time. Sorry. So I mean, no, yeah, what Tiny said was right. Because if they're a particularist, then they're. I mean, they could. I mean, they they could even forget. They could even totally change their mind about particularism. They might be like, "Well, you know, if particularism gives me these weird results, maybe particularism is wrong." I mean, that that's possible too. But presumably, in this case, when they're genuine particularists and they think that there's no general principles to follow in things like this they'll say well there's no problem here why would they think there's a problem um well it's not i don't i'm still i guess i'm just a bit confused so the idea is wait that... sorry hold on one second i'll be i'll be back in like five minutes sorry okay um well either way okay i'll talk to you for a minute then uh Tof, if you want so the idea is just that um someone watching this like it's not that every individual person watching will necessarily be persuaded it's just the idea that a lot of people who are watching are going to see the kind of system that uh is held by the carnist and just not align with it like that's kind of the right, extent sorry, of it oh well that was not five minutes okay yeah <laughs> so so it seems like you're expecting that if for any given particularist in the audience they are supposed to be persuaded. It doesn't have to be the case that persuades any particularist who's listening. Like the whole idea, okay. I, I, I mean, think it's, sure. it's just, it's weird. It's like, it feels like the whole flow of this conversation is there's some kind of assumption about what the argument and, or the dialogue process is supposed to do that I don't think I have, but that I think you guys have. So, I mean, the idea is just that you get someone to answer these kinds of questions and it starts spelling out what sort of beings they value here. And the idea is just that the answers that uh, can be given are just going to be unintuitive for most people. So if there's some given person who they are intuitive for, whether they're a generalist or a particularist, it's not going to be persuasive to that person. Well, I just... no, I agree with that. No, go right, ahead. But, but well, well, one sec, because I just, 
I, I feel like sorry for me Go it's ahead. really it's hard to communicate with like a million people at once like it's easy for me to just focus and talk to one person at a time so if you agree with that like that is basically what the argument is designed to do so at any time that you come in with like some kind of criticism that seems to assume that it's like supposed to persuade everybody like that's just not like I don't know why like that just shouldn't be assumed. It's never been said that like, that's see. what it's supposed to do. Well, just yeah, yeah. sorry. I should be clear in that the problem is that when we're talking about generalism versus particularism, if a generalist gives some principled reason why, you know, this and this, they might go back and say you might give them a reductio and the only option they have really is to either accept it or get rid of the principle, right? But the whole point is that the particulars here can easily just case by case basis say this one has value. Yeah, yeah, of course. No issue, right? Yeah, they um, could. So it seems like it doesn't have much weight against them because they can always just say, "Oh no, no, no that's fine. That that one does have value." Well, well, wait, wait, uh, wait is uh, again. It's it seems like the same thing just happened right there. So like, it's gonna just have weight to anyone who doesn't align with um, the kind of value judgments that are put on the table when we ask the question. That's not true, though. So, wait, can, I, can I say something? So well, well, sorry, well, well wait, wait a sec. Sorry, it's it's really too much at once. Like, I'm trying to ask to just speak with one person at a time, please. Here, you guys, I'll, so, I'll bow up for a little bit. Well, I was having the most progress with you. I'd rather just continue talking to you for a sec, Jen, because I feel like I've. if there's anyone who I'm going to get to understand uh, my position, I think it's most likely with you. So, can I just say one thing? Yeah, what do you want to say? I was just going to say, it, does, it doesn't actually do anything to convince the person who doesn't have the same values, because as was mentioned before, they can just say, well, I want to be a particularist, but <clears throat> take different cases. Well, someone Just take all the intuitive cases. Well, the idea is that a person can be listening to um, the account that they give, right, of what has value and what doesn't, and disagree and reflect on their own values and come to a different conclusion. Right, like that's that's the idea. Uh, so I don't know what I'm not sure what the criticism is supposed to be there. So okay. Well, just one sec. Let me. I'd really like I'd really like to just talk to Jen for a sec. So, Jen. So it seems like we have a lot of understanding. So it seems like you understand that the general idea here is we run this dialogue process. We get someone to kind of spell out what types of beings have value and which don't. And the idea is just that someone who's watching this is going to hear the kind of things that are said and then with any luck reflect on their own view and uh, change position, right? So it's not that necessarily every person is going to change their position or something like this. So do you understand like that general goal and do you see why that would be a reasonable thing to try to do? Um, yeah, yeah, so no, I, that part's fine. I, I don't think anyone, even, I don't think even Jack has an issue with that per se. Um, well, I'm, I'm curious, actually. Does Jack have an issue with that? I don't know if Jack's still in here. Oh, maybe he stepped away. Okay. No, no. Okay. Hey, Jack, what's up? I'm, I'm here. Sorry. Wait. I'm... Oh, there we go. Oh, wait. Gotta... Okay, there so... There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay. No, I think, I think that... Um, I think that... Um, Toki and... Dur, Dur, and um, what's the the other Quick. guy's name? Quick, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm bad with names. I think they're getting to the heart of what the objection is about the trade equalization dialogue. Well, I'm not sure what, like, the whole thing is, like, if you're granting to me the purpose that I just put on the table, that is, like, granting what the argument is supposed to do. So it's, like, a criticism beyond that is just like it seems like it's a criticism of something that you're expecting the argument to do that it's not intended to do because the whole idea is what i just put forward and what you guys seem to be in agreement with right it's just a tool that you use you run this dialogue process on someone and uh, they're going to spell out which kind of beings in here have value and which don't and the idea is that's going to um, cause some kind of like reflection among the people listening, possibly the person themselves, you're going to spell out like the conclusions of those positions, and um, that can result in like a change of position, right? So like that—that that is the idea. Like it's not something beyond that. So is there is there a criticism of that? As as the, it being a tool, like as like not, I wouldn't call it rhetoric, but like as a tool to possibly persuade people. I don't think anyone has that. 
Yeah. So when you're when you're criticizing it, like, wh what are what is the thing that you're expecting it to do that you're criticizing it for not doing? That it should have it should have some. Again, I'll, I'll use the uh, I'll use the word lightly, but some sort of weight with some with most people. But it seems like on the particulars account, it doesn't have much weight. It's the only real criticism, I suppose. Well, it may that's or, correct. It may or may not have weight to a given particularist. Like it just depends how what kind of you know reflection it inspires in them when they actually hear um, hear the dialogue process going on. So like one particularist might um might hear uh the dialogue process and just just simply not care that much find a single example unintuitive and say oh well you know i'm just going to change my take on that one example another might hear it and go well this whole thing seems kind of fucky to me like is there actually anything in this whole set of properties that really matters to me or uh, right so someone could be a particularist and um be affected like positively by the argument like in the direction of veganism or not the same well, the same is true like for it might a generalist just as well go the other way right because the point is is that if you know the person is a particularist right if the listener right is a particularist right and so he looks at another particularist's set of beings uh, or let's say bifurcated set, right? With uh, people, with the uh, creatures that are uh, eatable and the creatures that are not eatable, right? He just has the option, right? Of continuing to eat uh, cows, right? By just modifying the set to include the cases that put to, to move the cases that he finds in unintuitive into the other category right, so but the a, fact a, that the other person has and has a set that has unintuitive elements right doesn't carry any weight in terms of him abandoning really his desire to eat meat because all he has to do is say well you know my set overlaps with this person's set you know in all these places but where it doesn't overlap I just switch them out into the, the eatable or uneatable category respectively and I'm still able to eat cows. Right, but right? It, that, but that's not, there's nothing for, sorry soy boy, can you mute your mic? Um, there's nothing, so, um, no it's okay, there's nothing like special about particularism there like a generalist can just alter their principles such that it's going to include or exclude some being from you know, having value, right? So anyone can always just adjust their position such that the being who um who uh seemed like it, so if if we're running the process on someone and they um say that a given being doesn't have value and that seems weird to someone listening the listener could be a particularist or a generalist and they could just alter their um their values such that they um they uh count that being as having value Right, so it's not like that's not something that's specific to a particularist. Like a generalist could do the same thing. I don't think they could. Well, they could do it just by altering their set of principles instead of altering. But then, but instead, instead of you, instead, you're wait, the force wait a of second, your objection wait a against second. the generalist. Wait, wait a second. Instead of instead of taking a particular case and saying, "Oh, I move this particular case from the unacceptable to the or from the acceptable to the unacceptable category." Right, a generalist can cause a case to move from the uh, acceptable to the unacceptable category by changing around their principle set, just like the particularist can by changing around their, um, you know, specific evaluations of the situation. So anyone can problem. anyone can hear a reductio, and then just reformulate their position so that it doesn't have the reductio anymore. But the problem is that there actually can be a reductio against the generalist on the grounds that. If they change their principles, it might entail some other being is not morally valuable that they want to include, or vice versa. Whereas right. the particularist, they just ad hoc include all the things they want, and there's no reductio you can do. There's no principle overarching that entails any unsatisfactory position. You, you don't. You don't need yeah, any. Yeah, because it's not. Well, wait, wait, there's a problem. There's a problem there though. You, you don't. You don't need a principle for there to be a reductio though, right? Like if um, if the particularist gives some. Uh, 
just makes a moral judgment about a particular being that's out of line with what most people think like that is the reductio yeah but i mean that's just assuming so, that so they'll do that if the if the idea is like this argument or this line of of reasoning is like less um is going to be less effective against a particularist because they can just change their um change their values such that um they no they're uh, not changing they're not changing their values no what they're doing is what they're doing is seeing where the cases are that are uh, unintuitive well you, you cut out i don't know sorry don't... what they're doing is 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 seeing where the cases that are unintuitive to them are intuitive to the other person they don't actually have to change anything um wait well i thought we were talking about if some if uh, a particularist give some kind of answer to this question that has a result that they actually aren't happy with that they can just adjust that result they can just say oh actually you know what i do that's, think that being that's that's kind of like uh it's kind of like a metaphor right the, but the key point is right well can, you, can you tell me if what i i just want to understand if what i just said was was accurate like is the idea that if no it okay well then i'm not sure what you're trying to say exactly let me try reframing the issue in a way that will resolve that that part right so you could think about it this way you've got a listener who's a particularist who um uh eats eats cows but doesn't eat humans and you've got a person on display right who's being interrogated who also is a particularist who eats cows and um, doesn't eat human beings, right? Now, then the person who's being interrogated, right, is asked, is given this kind of inventory, right, um, in which he's given all these examples and asked which ones would be eatable and which ones right now the listener is can look at that set and say well he's got lots of examples that are unintuitive to me where if i were asked i wouldn't have put them in the eatable category i would have put them in the uneatable category or vice versa but he's not actually changing anything okay right? he's just noticing that the interlocutor right just has a uh, inverse values from him when it comes to specific examples. Uh, how so is that any... So I just don't nothing... understand how that's different than what happens with a generalist who's listening, though. A generalist can listen and just hear uh, their uh, set of things that they agree with or don't agree with and go, oh, like, I agree or I don't agree. Like, what's the difference there, whether it's a particularist or a generalist listening? People keep bringing up force of the... the, the argument here and the force against the generalists is actually present because it's very difficult to find principles that you want for one case that'll work for all cases exactly. whereas for the particularist it's not very difficult to just throw in whatever seems intuitive um so the idea is well i'm just trying to understand with the example that jack just gave so there's someone who's listening and they're um they're a generalist or they're a particularist and they hear um they hear some kind of uh position coming from uh the person who's having named the trait run on them that they don't agree with um i don't understand what uh why that's any different for like a particularist or a generalist like anyone could be listening and go i agree or i don't agree well i think tofi gave the answer it's possible, right, that somebody could give a principle which the other person would agree with down the line, right, when you ran the, the trade equalization process, right? But given that it's so difficult to find a principle that will cover all the intuitive and unintuitive cases, right, it's very easy to construct a reductio that will... Um, persuade most um, of these so-called listeners, right, that there's a problem 
with the principle being offered, right? Yeah. But see, I... but see, it's not that it's not actually interesting, right? For the person to learn if the other person is a particularist, that they have these unintuitive cases, right? Because they're going to expect that given that they're particularists, right, that they're just going to have different particulars from the other person. So when they start disclosing the unintuitive cases, right, it doesn't actually move them to revise their position because they're not seeing any problem. They're just seeing that somebody who has different values. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that I agree with that. So you could have a particularist listening who... Um currently thinks it's fine to eat animals and not fine to eat humans and they notice the kinds of evaluations that their fellow particularist is making about the beings in the trade equalization process they're unhappy with them they try to reflect for themselves on which beings uh, have and don't have value and then they realize that they're having a hard time doing so and they start questioning whether animals actually have value or not right so that can happen just as well if you're dealing with a particularist but i don't think any of us are denying that it can um yeah i mean then i don't i don't get it like or is the is the assertion that like that's some like minority of particulars who that would be the case for well there's no I mean, rational a, motivation yeah that's the point. well <clears throat> rational motivation what like what do we even like wait okay i don't i don't want to get way off in the weeds on whatever is meant by that so all i want to say is that the whole idea the whole idea is you run this dialogue process, the person starts spelling out what their system actually says, and then listeners, particularist or not, will reflect on those answers and hopefully be prompted to um, think about uh, veganism, right? So that's that's the whole idea. I don't understand, um, unless, unless we're saying that like particularists tend to have like radically different um, views on what's acceptable or not than generalists. I don't know why we'd expect some like big difference in how they're affected. Because suppose somebody has strong reasons to suppose particularism is true and they come to see that some other particularist has unintuitive beliefs. They're just going to say, well, there's no problem with particularism. We have very good reasons to suppose it's true. So I'm just going to say, let's just take these other intuitive things. They're not going to just say, wow, let's right. consider... They, they, could, they could do that. that veganism or is actually... They could do that, or they could end up thinking, hmm, well, like, where do I draw these lines? And is there actually a good answer? And then reflecting on whether they ultimately even agree with carnism, right? So well, we think well, it's it's the good really answer is well, just... The, yeah, the good answer is just all the things they want. One second. It's, so it seems like it seems like you're saying that a given person could just kind of like ad hoc alter their view so it doesn't have the consequence and you're saying no they're not like, altered um the person listening is not altering their view that's right um i thought we were saying that um or oh they just have an unspecified view and then they um they specify that oh like that's a case yeah but, they right that but, person, sorry what exactly, i mean what i mean person. yeah so I, i'm including moving from uncertainty to certainty as like altering a view um and uh, so if the idea, so yeah, so the whole idea is you run this process, people hear the argument, and then they're going to reflect and see if they think, um, if they think, uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the idea is that they're going to reflect on that process and then consider, like, do I think the beings in this process have value? Which ones do, which ones don't? And maybe ultimately make their way to like, well, do I even think I, uh, do I really agree that animals shouldn't have value? And it can be a particularist or a generalist who hears the argument. Um, and has that kind of reaction, or it could be a particularist or a generalist who hears the argument and has the reaction of, well, I'm just going to uh, like alter my position, you know what I mean by alter, uh, such that it doesn't have that consequence, right? Um, so if the idea is just that it's easier for a particularist to do like the altering part, then like, yeah, I mean, that seems fine. It seems easier to just say, oh, I just changed my judgment about this situation than like I build a new principle set. But unless you think that particularists and generalists have like radically different views about what is right, I don't know why we'd expect it to necessarily be um, like more effective for generalists. It's not a question of necessarily, right? The point is simply that it, I mean, obviously it's, it's, 
it's fundamentally just going to be an empirical question, right, whether the methodology has a better outcome for veganism than for some rival view, right? Um, but the point is that it seems like if somebody is a particularist, right, it offers them a very easy way to avoid the uncomfortable consequences that most generalists are going to be up against when they're confronted with these kinds of um, thought experiments. Yeah, well, right? I think that's just like generally, generally true for particularists. Like, I think that uh, a particularist, like any time, no, well, one, one second, any time that you're shown uh, some kind of conclusion that seems unpalatable to you or to others about your moral view if you want to get rid of it you can always just um just say well no my my evaluation is actually like yeah that situation's fine right you can kind of like well they're not know, they're yeah. not doing that though right the point is well i thought they were moving from saying, an unspecified uh from uncertainty yeah, they might, to yeah. they might say might say okay i don't know which i've never inventoried all the examples so I don't know in advance which ones are going to be um, acceptable and which aren't, right? But the point is, is that it seems like given that when you start asking that question, right, they can just classify according to their intuitions, right? The question is, why would we expect that what's more likely right, is that their intuitions are going to fall in such a way that more vegans are going to be produced than people are going to actually solidify their um, reasons for continuing to eat meat. So I guess um, I just want to, I want to get to the core of this. So let's see what we agree on. So we agree that you can just run this dialogue process, people are going to produce their answers to it, and then those who are watching are going to either be prompted to reflect or not, right? Like, we can agree on that much? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then are we going further and saying that um, a particularist who's listening is, like, far less likely to reflect on their views? than a, uh, a generalist? Well, we're saying that it's far less likely that the types of considerations that... The types of considerations that... Sorry, that will cause discomfort to most generalists, right, um, would arise in their case, right? Because any time a case seems uncomfortable, they will just say, well, given that that case makes me uncomfortable, I would just place that in the, in the, in the um, uneatable category, right? If I were, yeah, or if I were given that, right? They, they could do that or they could be prompted to reflect on their view. So what I'm trying yeah, to understand... We're not, we're not, what, we're not... Well, what I'm just trying to understand is what exactly, like, what is the criticism supposed to be? Like, what, what is it that you are saying is, like, bad or something here? Well, it just seems like, it just seems like it's very possible that the strategy might actually um, be contrary to your goal. Why would you expect that it would be contrary to my goals? I mean, that's not the... Because I assume your goal, I assume your goal would be to convince more people of vegan. Yeah, I think that that would be good. So but there's yeah. no real reason to suppose that'll happen. <laughs> with um, this. To suppose that it would persuade more people to go vegan than not to go vegan? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I can just kind of, like, appeal to, you know, my experience in actually using the argument. Like, most people aren't able to generate a good answer to it. A lot of people do go vegan from hearing it, but we don't have some kind of, like, like well, statistics when we, when we say more people we mean particularists here like i think yeah you're usually talking to people who aren't very familiar and are just kind of taking for granted this 
this principled approach. Um, yeah, so, well, wait, so are you granting that for a large number of people, um, this is likely to skew in the direction of veganism when you say that? Because particularists no, saying... are presumably like a minority, right? Mm, I'm saying usually the people you're talking to might uh, just have generalist leaning, or whether they... Or whether they do or not, like they, they just take for granted without realizing. Um, okay, so I guess um, I, I like I'm still just where I'm at now is I'm just trying to understand like what the objection is supposed to be. So the objection is supposed to be, um, it's supposed to be what exactly? The objection is just that it doesn't have force against. The particulars where it has well, like it's generalist. Well, wait. I mean, force. I just take that to mean that, uh, like, it's forceful if it causes them to reflect on their views. Well, uh, it's not just not really... that it reflects on their view. It has to have. It has to have the outcome that you want. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, like reflecting on their views, and uh, like the the goal there is that if they reflect on those views, it'll go in the direction of veganism. So I don't see a reason to think that um, a particularist will hear the kind of answers that are given to these questions and then um, think uh, and then skew less in the direction of veganism than a generalist. Like I would just kind of make the same induction for like any person. Like if I just see how most people react to the argument, I would assume that it would probably be the same general thing for particularists. They hear the examples. They probably have some kind of similar reaction to the general population about which beings there have value and which don't and then uh they are probably as likely as anyone else to reflect on their position and alter it to veganism at that point i don't think that's true. i think the particular is just more likely to just say well i want to keep eating meat <laughs> why what's and the I, I just wanna... what, what's the reason for that it seems like you're assuming that particularists are just going to are, are like less willing to reflect on their values or something no, because they're going to reflect on their values, but then they're just going to say, well, I just, I just take X, Y, you know, I was just well, why are, say the list is They're going to look at the person you, they're going to look at the person you've interrogated and say, oh, well, the fact that he has, done, has unusual intuitions by my lights when it comes to certain examples are. Are what? Certain examples. Issue for because I just don't put those people in. I don't put right, like those it, creatures I, 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 in well, that, well, in that it set. Sounds, it sounds if like, it doesn't pose well, one, any one problem second, for their particulars, why get, would they change their particulars? I don't want to get like gang attacked by a fucking group of people. Let's just take your time. So, um, a, uh, I don't know why you would think it would be the case that a particularist would hear the kind of uh, answers that are given to these types of questions and then be any less likely to reflect on their overall moral decision about being a non-vegan than a generalist would. Well, we've explained that. Because um, it doesn't Okay, well, I don't, do I don't think I... Pardon? If it doesn't... If, it do, if the argument doesn't do anything to harm particularism, why would they... Why, wait, why would the argument like, do something to harm particularism? How, because where are if, you it does, if it doesn't... If it doesn't give them some reason to suppose generalism like what why would why it would, be wait, why, why would, would they, they just even... suddenly become vegan why what? would they not just wait, say wait well why, i just intuitively think wait that all second, these beings are wait a second edible. wait a second why what do you mean assume generalism why is generalism possibly coming into this right so the argument is not designed to make someone think oh i should become a generalist that's just like it's not even related i don't know how you would get to something like that um the idea is just I mean, again, I think I'm just repeating myself, so, like, I'm not sure, like, maybe it's just not, like, getting through, but I think I've been pretty clear. So, someone hears this, right, they hear the dialogue flow process, and then they hear the examples that are given, and then those examples very likely strike them as unintuitive, they reflect on their view, right, and then I don't see why we'd think that a particularist is any less likely to reflect and go vegan than a generalist would be. Well, what explain. would be the motivation? What well, would be the motivation for the particulars to just randomly go vegan? Why not just say, well, I think that these... Well, they could have... Well, let me answer. They could have the exact same kind of uh, reaction that a generalist has 
well, I mean, g the generally same reaction, where they could hear those cases and they could go, hmm, well, you know, I don't feel too good about those cases. Let me, like, think this problem through. Like, where exactly do I think, what kind of beings do I think have value in here or not? And they could start going through it in their head, right? And they could start being like, you know, I'm actually struggling with this. Like, I don't know if I can generate answers here that make me too happy. And then they can be like, well, I mean, what about the question in the first place of if I even think it's okay to kill animals, right? So it seems like they could just as easily make their way there as a generalist could. What What is wrong with the account that I just gave? What's What's the problem with that? I don't see the thought process that would be going on in the particular set that that well i'm that, gonna that say what yeah, i'm not, gonna, I'm gonna say be... what you and jack just said to me which is it's been explained to you i mean i just walked you through it right so if the thought process could be for example hmm well all of those cre the way that this person just categorized these creatures seemed very unintuitive to me let me think about this how might i categorize them hmm I'm actually struggling to even find what kind of beings in here have value yeah, and what kind not, of beings don't. We're not, we're not saying that it's not possible for that to happen. Right? It's like easy to say it's logically possible that this could be the outcome, right? That's not the right. But I'm, uh, I'm asking you why you think that that would be um, less likely to happen with a particularist than a generalist. Why, why would we? Why would you what? Why would Duncan, we think... Duncan, can you mute your mic? You're going off. Why would we think what? That they would find it in... You just, you're breaking up. Why would we sorry. think that... It's, no, sorry, it's fine. They, you, why would we think that they would find it what? Find it uncomfortable that another particularist itemizes the... Or inventories, let's say, the the um, individual examples, right, in a different way than they would inventory. Okay, sorry, the question right. is why would they find it, the fact that another particularist uh, inventories the examples differently than them, why would they find that what? Why would they find that in some way an un... And it's, it's just, it's your mic, a what? An uncomfortable truth to learn. Um, well, the idea, why would they find it uncomfortable? Well, because they have different values. No, but the point is they would expect at the outset that the, that the itemization would be different from their particulars. Sure, sure, but when they right. hear the specific itemization, they might go, well, wait, some of those seem, now that I actually think about the kind of beings that are in here, some of this seems really weird to me, right? What kind of what kind of classification would I engage in here, right? So the idea, again, like, it just, it seems like we're going in circles because it seems like, like, I'm giving you the account of, like, what the argument does, how a particularist could react to it, and I'm just not understanding, like, are you just objecting and saying a particularist isn't likely to do that? What well, doesn't seem to be likely. Why would you think that? Why, because why it would seems you... so easy for it seems so easy to imagine the particularist to just say, "Oh well, I don't, I just don't draw, I just don't put those examples." So your claim, your claim is basically that. So let me just make sure I understand. You think the argument could be effective for generalists, the argument could be effective for particularists, but because it's easier for particularists to. Um, find their way to a position that makes sense um there's like uh a lower chance of this dialogue process causing a particularist to reflect on their views and change them well it seems it it, it seems what it doesn't really seem like there's any likelihood that they should change their views at all well that's because right? it, it well wait any likelihood that seems like a strange claim. Like, it seems like you're, like, entering people's minds or something. Like, a lot of people are going to react by hearing the kind of view that's put forward and going, well, I certainly don't align with that. What kind of answer do I want to generate? And then at that point, they're thinking about the question. Yeah, right, but they're the not going to change their view. Yeah, they're not going to be like, oh, the outcome of this process is, um, it turns out that, um, 
as I go through the inventory, right, every intermediate example, um, every intermediate example goes in. Mm -hmm. Every intermediate example goes what? In one or the other category. Like that whole so, set of intermediate examples so gets lumped into the, one or the, the other. The idea is just that a particularist is not likely to hear the dialogue process and reflect on their view. Is that is that what the criticism is supposed to be? No, they no, might reflect suppose. on Dun their... Duncan, can you please stop? I just want to talk to Wait. one person at a time. Thank you. No, no, actually, go, go ahead, Tofi, because I'm... I'm having problems with the app, so it's probably better if he, he does. Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> lost my train of thought now, but um, it's not that they won't reflect on their view. Rather, it's that when they reflect on their view, there's not really, it, given that there's no problem for their view that's actually been posed, there's no reason for them to think, oh, well, I, I might have to reevaluate, like, this is presumably somebody who's already, you know, somebody who might be eating meat or something, right? Who's, who's just listening and is saying, well, maybe I should reevaluate and become vegan. Like, why would they do that? There's no reason for them to do that at all. Oh, well, I just completely disagree with that, right? They could hear someone start spelling out the examples of what beings have value and, and don't and go, well, wait, that seems very strange to me. And then they start thinking for themselves about what beings have value and which don't. That seems completely... But there's nothing in that, that thought that process seems, of that thinking... That seems astoundingly straightforward to me. There's nothing in the thought process of thinking which beings have value and which beings don't that's going to cause the particulars to think, oh, well, I guess I just have to go vegan. Like, what, they... <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think you're just entirely missing the point. The idea is you run this dialogue process, someone starts generating answers, a particularist listening could uh, hear those answers and go, well, I mean, that those, a lot of those seem really fucking weird to me. How would I try to answer this question, right? And that's where the thinking starts. Like, what, is there some kind of problem with that analysis that I just no, gave? No, we're, we're granting that it's logically possible. Well, not, <laughs> uh, we're, not, <laughs> we're not just talking about, uh, like, logical possibility, though. It's like that... It's the, the idea is I don't understand why that would be any less likely for a particularist than a generalist. It seems to me like anyone who hears the argument or the dialogue process being run and hears answers being given that they don't agree with is likely to think, well, what are my answers? It just seems irrelevant whether they're a particularist or a generalist. The reason why it's relevant. Reason Sorry. The reason why it's relevant is that for any principle that's invoked, right, it's easy to find examples um, that would be counterintuitive with respect to application of that principle. Right, right? yeah, no, in the I, case, I, I understand. In the case of the, uh, yeah, no, I, I the, what the, you, yeah. In the case of the particular, particularist, right, if you encounter somebody who has a counterintuitive belief set, right? That doesn't pose any problem for them, right? Because right. they I, just I think, think, that's not my belief set. I think, I think that, I, like, I don't know what it is, but it seems like you're just not, like, you're just not tracking what I'm saying. I mean, just think about this, okay? You hear someone asked a question, they give a quest, they give an answer that seems radically wrong to you. The, I, I don't understand why that would prompt a uh, why that would prompt a particularist to think about the question for themselves any less than it would prompt a generalist to think about the question for themselves? We're not saying it doesn't prompt them to think about. It. Okay, right. well that's but what wait wait but when you is, say that you're giving massive ground to what I'm saying here. So if, if I the don't think so. Well, wait. So if the criticism is not if the criticism is not that um, a particularist is less likely to reflect on their values, uh, given that they hear the uh, name the trait uh, uh, conversation taking place. If the claim is not that they're any less likely to reflect on their values, then what is the claim? That that reflection is less likely to lead to veganism for the particularist? Absolutely. That doesn't seem at all obvious to me, right? They could think about, they could start thinking about the question and realize that their values <laughs> align with <laughs> veganism just <laughs> as likely as a generalist could. Why you would 
Pardon me? Yeah, it's logically possible, right? But when you say just No, no, no. The claim isn't just logically possible. The, like, I don't know why you keep try, like, trying to back it up to logically possible as if I'm making some insanely minimal claim or something, right? Um, my claim is I don't see any reason, right? So if we agree that um, the, trait, the name the trait dialogue process is just as likely to make a particularist reflect on their views as it is to make a generalist reflect on their views, and then the claim we're disagreeing about is that that reflection is more likely to lead to veganism for a generalist than a particularist, I just don't see why I would think that, right? Like, it well, seems... we gave you the reason why. Right, well, just listen to this, okay? So it seems to me like humans generally have like somewhat similar values. You know, we've evolved in a similar way. If we're in the same kind of society, we've been, you know, encultured in the same kind of way. Um, and it seems like uh, if you start reflecting on your values with respect to some given topic, I mean, you're about as likely as anyone else who grew up in the same kind of culture, who has the same kind of evolutionary history, to reach the kind of answer that that other person would reach. I don't see why we would assume that not to be the case. Well, because and we're and also saying... even if we even if we grant even if we grant um, that a particularist is less likely to be persuaded by the argument, I don't I don't know what the uh, I don't know what exactly the problem is there. Um, but but I'm not even granting that. That's not obvious to me. Well, the idea the idea is right that in the in the generalist case, the reason why the generalist is more likely to abandon their willingness to eat meat and become a vegan, right, is because as long as they want to stick to generalism, it's hard for them to find a principle that will accommodate all the counterintuitive cases. Right? Yeah, but that okay. bar, that bar, right, is just not there in the particular case, right? Yeah, so that's the, all there is to it. Right. So the idea is that um, you know you have a generalist and you have a particularist, and they both hear name the trait being run, and they start reflecting on their values. That the particularist is less likely to adjust their values to veganism because it's easier for them to uh, construct a position that uh, uh, that still justifies carnism. Like, is that, well, is that I, the idea? Well I, well, I wouldn't use the word construct exactly, but well, well, you, you know, could whatever. say discover, you know. Sure. They could discover, because the point is, no challenge is really being offered to them, right? In the, in the generalist case, there's a clear challenge, right? They're saying, oh, if, if I thought that that was a good principle, right? Like, let's say the person gives the principle and the person uh, who's listening thinks, oh, that sounds attractive. That sounds like a good description of my own position, right? Or that sounds like an attractive position to me, right? As soon as you encounter one counter example, you think, oh, the principle is in jeopardy. I have to abandon it and find another one, right? And I'm granting that it's actually going to be extremely hard to do that, right, for most people. Okay. So I think for, for generalists, it seems like a very good strategy, right? Okay. But see, in the particular case, right, when somebody says, um, these are my particulars, right, that's not actually posing a challenge to them, right? That's just ordinary moral disagreement right which is what they expect at the outset right that other people are going to have different particulars than they do so when the person goes through the inventory and says ah this case is, goes in the eatable category this case goes in the uneatable category and the listener thinks well that's not how i would classify how, how i would classify it if it were posed to me it's not actually a challenge to their intuitions Right, because they're just saying, I have different intuitions than they do, right? But it's not as though I'm dealing with some uncomfortable inconsistency if I thought I was upholding some principle and then found counterintuitive cases that didn't seem to fit with the principle, 
Yeah. Do, do you see see what we're getting at? I think I see to some degree. It might just take more talking about it, but um, okay, no so, problem. So when we're talking about, um, we have a particularist and a generalist. They both here name the trait being run, um, and they're both prompted to an equal degree to reflect on their values. Um, it seems like we we get we get that far, and we all agree. And then it seems like the disagreement is that a particularist is more likely to, upon reflection, just still come out with values that are carnist, right? Like, that's the claim that we disagree about? Well, I'm again, I'm not taking, like, a strong stand on this, because it's ultimately an empirical question, right? Sure, I'm just of offering, I'm offering what seems like a major word. Um, okay, well, let's I'm just... I'm offering what seems like a major word well, I, I right, just, for I, that kind of... Right, but I, I just want to... So just to be clear, so... Because uh, I just want an answer to that so I can understand. Like, part of why I ask questions is so I can just know what the other person is saying exactly. So when... So we agree. We run the argument. A particularist hears it. A generalist hears it. They're both prompted to the same degree, as far as we can tell, um, to reflect on their values. The idea is that upon reflection on their values um, a particularist is more likely to just maintain a carnist value set than a generalist well we're offering a we're offering a you're offering Sorry, a we're, we're offering a consideration that would favor that uh, that conclusion right so the reply that I have is I think that people are uh you know, we're biologically similar, we've been raised in similar cultures, and I think that, say you have one particularist and one generalist, if they're biologically similar and they're encultured in a similar way and they reflect on a given question, I think that they're pretty likely to generate similar answers to it. I think it's just the getting them to reflect once you get there is just as likely to get one to reach the conclusion as it is to get the other to reach it. Like, if you were, like, for example, Jack, if you were just making the claim that a particularist who wants to like kind of like ad hoc like maintain their position as a carnist will have an easier job than a generalist no I but would... it's not ad hoc right right no i under I un is... wait stop i understand that's not the claim you're making i'm just talking about a nearby claim that i would agree with like i would certainly agree with that it's easier to just generate some kind of position that makes sense of you know whatever the moral qualm is as a particularist um but just just to like really hammer down on like the core thing because obviously like like, look, when we're having a disagreement, I take it to be the case that there is, like, some proposition out there or propositions that you and I have different attitudes towards. Like, I think it's true, you think it's false. I'm pretty sure that it's, you know, I'm not sure at all about whether it's true or false. You think it has a true or false status, right? So what I'm trying to do is just find the proposition that is in contention. So that's why I'm asking you, like, is this what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? So we just, we agree if we have a particularist and a generalist listening to the argument that um, both of them, as far as we can tell right now, of course it's an empirical question, but as far as we can tell right now, they'd both be prompted to the same degree to reflect on their values. And then if, and then it seems like what might be the proposition that we're disagreeing about is um, the proposition that upon reflection, the particularist is more likely to maintain a carnist value set. Is that the proposition we're disagreeing about? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And so my reason for not thinking that that's the case, right? And it's possible it could be the case, but I bet even if it is the case, it's not the case to some massive degree. Um, and the reason I think that is because if people are biologically similar and culturally similar, and you have two people who by whatever means are prompted to reflect on a given moral question, that just in virtue of that biological and cultural similarity, they're likely to generate similar answers. Do you, do you just, before you make another point, can you just tell me if you agree with that or not? Um, I guess in this case, probably not. Okay, but I don't really understand why that would, why, why it would be, okay, wait, why would it be different in this case than in any other case? Like, you th so, so when I ask you a, a general question of like, if a particularist and a generalist are both uh, who, who've been raised in a similar uh, uh, way, like you know, it's not two people from different ends of the earth or something. If, if we have a particularist and a generalist and they're both prompted to reflect on a given moral question, 
that um that, sorry let me let me just catch my thoughts um that they're likely to generate similar answers in virtue of the fact that they're um biologically and culturally similar um you say you say in this case that's less likely why why would that be less likely in this specific case than in any case where they're made to reflect on some moral question uh because it just seems like like veganism and vegan arguments are actually like have a lot of currency and it hasn't really done that much to um, convince people to stop eating um but that seems like it would apply kind of like equally to particularists and generalists it seems like if if the idea is that like you know there's some ambient level of like support for carnism that's people get whatever from biology from culture whatever it might be then it seems like if you say that you know a particularist and a generalist are given a question about carnism to reflect on that to whatever degree that like biases the generalist towards carnism it's going to do the same for the particularist like i don't understand why we'd expect from that a differential response um well, I mean, I thought the idea was that if people are made to reflect on it, they're going to come, they're going to be more likely to come to the same answer in virtue of the fact that they share the same cultural background and the same biology. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the case. And then you suggested that uh, you don't think that's the case in this example, which I like. I take that to mean that you think that that's normally the case, but there's some kind of exception here for some reason. And less I don't know whether it's you. normally the, no, I don't know whether it's normally the case or not, right? But it seems like in this case, it just doesn't seem seem. Um. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know about that. I mean, to me, it seems like people who are biologically and culturally similar are likely to generate similar answers to moral questions. Like that. That just seems like it's something that's just generally going to be true. And that's why yep. I, I wouldn't expect. Um, if a particularist and a generalist both honestly reflect on this question, I wouldn't expect them to generate like radically different answers because they have a similar culture and they have a similar, um, similar uh, biology. Well, if it is, if 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 that is what you would expect, it seems like the evidence would be overturning that that hypothesis. What's um What's the evidence there? That, in, that with exposure to arguments about veganism, um, you know, vast numbers of people are still unmoved. Right, right but, to but, but that's, that's an argument that, uh, the, that it seems like you're saying there that maybe arguments for veganism are overall ineffective, right? That's not giving some explanation of why um, if you have a generalist and a particularist who have similar uh, upbringing and biology, that um, they would be likely to generate like significantly different answers, right? Like it sounds like you're just but giving they some. They do. They do generate different answers. Well, what do you mean when you say that? Well, some people, many many people think that eating meat is okay, and many many people think it's not. Right, but do you think that uh, the support for veganism is like, um, do you think that it's differentially distributed between particularists and generalists? Oh, I have no idea. Right, because that's like, that's the kind of question that I'm getting at. Like, it sounds like you're saying something about the general efficacy of arguing for veganism as it applies to particularists and generalists, right? So, I mean, okay, but that doesn't seem like an account of why it's um, more likely, or sorry, why, why it's likely to be the case that a particularist and a generalist will generate different answers than each other um, uh, when they're prompted to reflect on a given moral question. Like, no, but uh, we have given an explanation for why we would expect that. Um, I don't think that we've gotten there. So we, what we agreed on, we agree. So we agree that if a generalist and a particularist are both exposed uh, to this sort of dialogue process, as far as we can tell, it's equally likely to prompt them to reflect. And then the claim is that um, 
a particularist is the the outcome of them uh, going vegan is less likely for a particularist than a generalist. So what's being said there is that you think in the case of veganism uh, that if particularists and generalists are both prompted to think about this question, particularists are less likely to come out vegan. And then I just asked you if you think there's any if you even know about different like levels of veganism among particularists and generalists and you said no so i just i assume we must be talking past each other in some way because if you don't know that then it seems like what you should be saying is well no i don't really have any reason to believe that if a particularist and a generalist are both made to reflect on their values a particularist is less likely to come out vegan than a generalist oh but we gave you the reason um, I don't really think you did. So, do you want to give it again? So, the idea is that if a person is a meat eater and a generalist, right, it's very easy if they're asked to produce a principle to um, inventory examples that will be counterintuitive with respect to application of that principle, right? And so it's actually going to be very hard for them to maintain generalism by revising uh, the principle in order to uh, accommodate all the counterintuitive cases, right? Okay. Um, but in the case of... Per in the case of particularism, right, if somebody says, oh, I'm a particularist and I'm a meat eater, right, um, and then they start inventorying all the uh, cases, these so-called intermediate cases, right, and putting them into the eatable and uneatable category, right, it's not actually a challenge. To that particularist's own view, right, to encounter those cases, right, because that's just not, if they were asked those questions, that's just not how the classification they would come up with, right, they would just say, oh, well, yeah, I overlap with this guy here, here, and here, but these cases, you know, are ones where I would put them in the other category, right, so nothing about, um, no, nothing has been sort of adduced to make me uncomfortable in my position, right? All that's happened is, is that I've discovered, which is what I would expect, that other people have intuitions uh, that go against the grain of mine, you know, when it comes to these, um, you know, when it comes to, to these types of examples. Okay, so I think we might be finally zeroing in because this is it was when you said this very kind of thing before that I raised this same kind of objection. Um, so what you seem to be saying is that it's easier for a particularist to um, I, like I don't want to say generate or construct or what whatever, but to just to, like whatever we're just gonna deal with the imperfect language to like come up with a position the uh a uh, carnist position uh that they're um like comfortable with like if we're saying if we're saying it's here let me let me catch my thoughts and think about how best to put this it seems like what you're saying is that um for a generalist it's harder to construct a framework that cuts against veganism because principles like reach into other areas and when you create a principle against veganism it's likely to have some kind of implication you're not comfortable with whereas like a particularist just doesn't need to have any of those implications because they can just have a different particular judgment there right that's like the kind of thing you're saying yes okay right so this is the kind of thing that was said before when i then raised this point right so the question is why why would we assume that the particularist and the generalist have are are have um how do, how do i put it like as like a starting point from what they've learned from culture and what's been ingrained in them by from biology uh different values so like you're so the if what you're putting out is like 
look, it's it's easier for a particularist to uh, construct like a, a carnist position. For a generalist, you're going to have these like implications uh, if you try to generate some anti-vegan principle that you'd probably be uncomfortable with. So it's like harder for a generalist to do it. Um, that's that's getting at like it's almost like that's a question about if the if the person is trying to like fight veganism like how hard a time they're having whereas like what i'm asking about is um if we just look at people as they are with the values they have what reason do we have to assume that particularists are um less likely to have values that align with veganism upon inspection than generalists um Well, because I, I, I grant you your point. I grant you the point that it's easier for a particularist to generate like a carnist framework than a generalist like that for sure. Absolutely. But I don't see why it would be the case that we'd expect them to have different values given um, their uh, given their uh, shared like upbringing and biology, at least not like radically different. Um, well, maybe maybe the issue there is that we're not thinking about why the generalist doesn't just become a particularist to accommodate those kids. Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Well, because <laughs> it could be the case, right, that when you adduce counterexamples to the generalist, right, if they just have some prior commitment to generalism, right, they're kind of like forced by those counterexamples to fight to, you know, have to become vegans, right? Because they can't find a principle to encounter the um, counterintuitive cases. But maybe it's the case that many of them aren't really aware of the particularist option. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is that maybe like the kind of values that a generalist and a particularist hold are um, actually similar, but the generalist just has a harder time generating a position that captures those values, so they're more likely to like capitulate to veganism. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That I agree with. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so then, um, then the question becomes about. <clears throat> what those underlying values are and if they actually ultimately support veganism. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't I mean, yeah, well, I mean, I don't I don't know either. <laughs> this is yeah. so I I sit there as a subjectivist, right? Like and when I say I'm a subjectivist, like look, I don't know your view super well. Like you think that there's like there's a real world out there and there's the real things out there that we perceive and those things really do have an effect of making us have a given value and it's like those value properties are just whatever actual what like physical properties of objects in there out there cause you to have a given like reaction or like evaluation like you have so, like i don't know exactly but you have some kind of view that's roughly something like that right about meta ethics i i think that there are value properties that are non-natural that suffuse uh, objects and states of affairs over and above their physical properties. And it's in virtue of perceiving those that one acquires um, uh, moral or evaluative beliefs. Okay, I don't, I don't want to end up way in the weeds here just for the sake of- No, like, that's keep, fine. No, no, no I, I know, just for the sake of keeping it on track. Um, but you, uh, you, just on, on your view, are those value properties natural or are they non-natural? None. Okay, so there, I guess there is a bit of a difference between our views, but I don't think that my view will be like radically offensive to you. So like, um, and I'm not against non-natural things, I'm just not convinced they exist. Um, so the way, the way that I think about it is, um, I think that like subjectivism is just like two propositions. Like I think that indexed moral propositions have truth value. And I think that um, the truth value of those propositions is like determined by the attitude of the subject they're indexed to. So to me, a moral proposition is just something like, you know, for Jack, it's wrong to like punch a child or something, assuming that's wrong for you, I don't know. Um, and all that ultimately means is like, 
it's true that Jack has like a negative attitude towards punching children. So like you, uh, I'm sure we can, uh, you know, pick little areas of disagreements, but broadly there's like a similar meta ethic there. It's like, it's anti-realist. There's not like, well, I guess yours, I guess you would call that a form of realism, but it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty relative though. Like, it's you know sort of I mean? like a midway. Yeah. It's a relativist form of realism. You might say it's sure. It's realist about some, it's realist with respect to most other anti-realist views, but with respect to full-blown, robust realist views, it's it's relativistic, which is to say anti-realistic in some respects. So it's sort of like a midway, intermediate type position. Yeah, like I have a feeling that there's nothing about my view that contradicts your view. Um, I think your view might just have more specifics to it than mine. So like, uh, since mine is just two propositions, I can just see what you think about it. So. If I say indexed moral propositions have truth value, and all I mean by an indexed moral proposition is something like, for Jack, it's wrong to do X, and all that means is you have a negative attitude towards that thing. I'm sure you'd agree with that so far? Basically, yeah. Yeah, and then if we say the truth value of those um, indexed propositions is contingent on the attitude of the subject they're indexed to, I mean, all that means is like, say that the proposition is like for jack it's wrong to do x but you actually have a positive attitude towards doing x well then the proposition that for you it's wrong to do that is false because it's just not true that you have a, a negative attitude towards the thing so you'd probably agree with that second proposition like given that understanding of what an indexed moral prop is of course its truth value changes depending on whether the subject it's indexed to um actually has the attitude described by the proposition or not right okay Okay, so, so like, I'm sure that we could talk about technicalities there, but we, like, broadly agree, right? So um, now just back to the thing about veganism. So we, I think we agreed on quite a lot there, and then at the end we just came down to, um, okay, so the, um, let me see if I can recap this. So we uh, do run name the trait dialogue process. A particularist is listening, a generalist is listening. Um, they're both, as far as we can tell, equally prompted to reflect on their values. And then um, we say that for uh, the particularist, try not to mess this part up, for the particularist, it's going to be easier to come up with a framework. I know you don't like the word come up with, but I just don't know what to use right now. So come up with a framework that, um, that uh, j remains carnist than the generalist. Because again, for the generalist, uh, th they're going to have to find principles that do it. And principles are just more likely to be susceptible to reductio. Um, That's so, right. so then, then the question just becomes, okay, so setting aside that fact about it's easier for the particularist to maintain a Carnist position, um, just looking at the underlying values they both have, like we're, we're basically saying they're likely to have the same underlying values, but it's going to be harder. Uh, so let me, I think I can say this right. So they're likely to have the same underlying values, but, um, the generalist is more likely to capitulate to veganism because for them it's going to be harder to generate an anti-vegan position, right? We agree about all that? Yes. And then the question is just, okay, so those underlying values that we assume are roughly similar between the particularists and the generalist who've had similar up upbringing in biology, do those underlying values actually support veganism? Um, so Yeah, I'm not taking a position on yeah, and I actually don't really take a position there either. I mean, I have my leanings. I think well, most... you probably have you probably have more insight into it than I do because I don't really spend a lot of time talking about veganism. Well, certainly not as much as you do, right? I mean, I don't but know why you do it all day, but you've been doing it for years, right? And you're doing Phew. it a lot. And I wouldn't say I've been doing that. <clears throat> right. Okay. Um, no, so, so yeah, that, that makes sense. So, I mean, I'm not going to try to leverage my insight, but like, I think that I could go from things that we both probably agree with. So I am not, I would not actually try to hold down a way that those like base intuitions go one way or the other. Um, it's not, uh, like uh, that would just be a thing you'd need to dig up some empirical data to try to make a case for. So we're obviously not going to debate that here and now. Um, but I think that most people actually um tend to care about animals when you tell them about animals most people if they like saw an animal being abused in front of them wouldn't actually be like very comfortable with that happening um yeah I'm well, sure I, I think i would agree with that and and actually you know i mean i've often thought that uh just showing slaughterhouse footage is more effective than any argument 
is likely to be. Yeah, I think that's possible. I used to actually put a lot of slaughter footage um, into my videos. Um, I think I think it depends who you're dealing with, but you know, people always, for some reason, because of what I do, they think that I'm likely to have answers to like what is the most effective thing you can do, and I really don't know. I yeah, I mean, I guess there's a danger the other way, right? Is that people can become inured, right? Because presumably, slaughterhouse workers are like not that different from concentration camp guards, right? Like, mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm sure there's a, a range, right? But probably many of them. They just don't even really like maybe when they first started working or st first started doing those kinds of things, they found it difficult to do. But probably for many of them, when they do it day after day for years, the suffering just becomes invisible. Right. Mm -hmm. So I suppose that there's a danger it could go in the other direction. Well, so, some of them end up like deeply tormented, but like, yeah, no, yeah. there's definitely that. I mean, I can even tell you from my own experience without like, I don't want to, we will not eat up all our time talking about our lives or something. But from my experience, like I had to edit so many videos with slaughter footage that it just, it has no impact on me. Like I could watch. Oh, the that's most, interesting. Uh, well, yeah, it's just from all this editing. I'm still a committed vegan because I understand like what I value, but um it's just it's yeah, just it's like i can like see the most me, fucked up thing yeah for me like you should understand i actually don't have any hostility towards veganism in fact i would actually be much happier if everybody became a vegan right it's just never been something that's been very convenient for me to do right um but if if i had to actually like kill the animal or if somebody said were there in front of me saying okay, this is your dinner, you make the decision, fire the, you know, pull the trigger, you know, I'm going to pull the trigger, you just give me the order and I'll pull the trigger, right? It would be very hard to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But when you go to a grocery store, you just aren't thinking about those things. Right. right. Um, so that's the... Sorry, you cut out, so that's, that's the... That's the only kind of... Sorry, that that's the reason why, you know, the slaughterhouse footage sort of like prompts consideration right because mm -hmm. it it's sort of like something uh analogous to that right where you're just sort of yes it's in yeah. your face right? absolutely you're not Visceral. able to sort of like yeah exactly well here here's another thing that might be interesting to you so a lot of people uh when they start uh talking about the arguments and getting into the philosophy around veganism come to a conclusion that they agree with veganism but they're not motivated to be vegan then when they have the visceral experience of watching the footage uh that like tips them into like okay now i can act on my ethics um, right right so that might get at some like motivation external or internalism but just to, to take it back because i think we we actually have basically reached agreement here um and i, I want to try to go over it and see if we just how in agreement we are so um just with that final kind of fact we got to about what people's ultimate underlying values are um we're both we're both taking an agnostic position i think not because we don't have intuitions i have intuitions one way actually on this but um just because we don't have the data and we're not going to sit here getting into an empirical discussion without data um but the kind of uh basic examples that i have given here and that even you've just given like i mean i, I think that you know, I'm not trying to score a point here, but I think that you kind of agree, it seems like. It seems like you agree that most people have intuitions that are, like, not very friendly to just, like, harming animals and fucking with them. Like you, No, and yeah. in fact, I, I'm inclined to think, as I expect you would, that, you know, hundreds of years from now, animal, um, uh, you know, things like factory farming and stuff. So, if things like factory farming and so on, right, uh, you know, meat, um, industrialization of meat production and so mm -hmm. on, that will be seen as something like slavery. Yeah, yeah, I have a very right. strong intuition in that direction. Yeah, so I, I share that with you. Okay, so, I th sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you saying something else there? It's just your mic. No, 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 I was done. I was... Ah, okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I think we're largely on the same page. So we agree that name the trade is completely effective against every person, and it'll persuade anyone to go vegan within. No, okay, I'm just kidding, but we, it seems like we largely agree. <laughs> we're, we're, we're we're saying like, um, if people are exposed to this argument, doesn't matter if they're a generalist or a particularist. Based on the data we have access to, they're probably about equally likely to um, reflect on their views. 
Um, upon reflection, um, it's uh, so if the particularist wishes to resist veganism and construct a carnist position, it is easier for the particularist to do that than the generalist because the generalist position um, you have to generate principles to uh, um, to uh, justify your carnist position, and those principles are more likely to have unpalatable conclusions than particulars. Um, and then when it comes to the underlying value set um, that people have before they try to construct a position or something like this, um, we, as far as we can tell, think that the values are likely to be the same, but we're not really sure if those values lean in the direction of veganism or not. But if we use our intuition, we'd say they probably kind of do. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. Well, Jack, I think we've just resolved an issue. Um, so do you have anything else on that uh, topic? No, not really.